Um, we're going to be live all day today with a wheat interior first and then a doodle trim. So stay with us while we work all day. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. <laughs> so you ready to wash a doodle? Yeah. yeah. Who's here? Hi, guys. Oh, my goodness. Good morning. They're all awake and filing in. I don't know. They're not too awake. They're not saying anything. There, there we they go. Are. Billy. Hi, Billy. He's always first. <laughs> I get to groom Juju soon. I was reading that in yeah, some past stuff. Juju's so, so cute. Juju is what type of dog? Like a Pomeranian. Oh, nice. Oh, so cute. you're going to love it, Billy. And Jen and Ader and Leslie and Hello. Laura and Patty. Here Hi. They, everybody's showing. Everybody's coming to the show. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get to the bathtub. With our week. The joyful hound. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so... If you're one of my customers, you know that I have problems with my arm and I only handle dogs under 15 pounds. And because I have been maintaining my arm, I can handle these bigger dogs today, but I cannot do it regularly because that'll kill she me. She also has help. If yes, she needs I have help. help. But, you know, I can do this once in a while. I just can't do it every day for work. So well, just to have an understanding there that I just can't do this all the time. As much as you want to. As much as I want to. <laughs> I love it. So yeah. I'm having fun getting to do some of my old favorites. The dogs I'm doing today were regular clients that I can't do anymore. And they were nice enough to let us borrow their dogs today because we want to show off these haircuts. So we will be doing more of that in the future with some of our other past fluffy big dogs. Um, just because I can do it every now and then. Just not every day. Um... I'm gonna take a second and go text this dog's owner the link so she can watch, mm -hmm. and then we'll get him washing. His name is And Maui. I know what you do when I leave the room with this camera. <laughs> what? I've been seeing what you sneak in there and do. We're so excited today. <laughs> this is our last day. Come on, guys, get feel the energy. I feel it, I'm so excited. And I gotta tell you, wonder what's wrong with my hair. Nothing is wrong with my hair today. I'm representing an icon in our industry, Liz Paul. Liz Paul has changed things in our pet and grooming industry. She has set standards. She's no longer with us, but she's inspired all of us. And she still lives with us every day in our grooming. And she always had fabulous big hair. So I'm trying to represent for Liz Paul today. <laughs> our Wheaton's name is Maui, correct? Maui. Maui, Wowie, Maui, 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 Wowie, and he is Wowie. You're gonna love him. He's beautiful and he's a champion. And he's in love with me. How did he fall in love with me in just moments? He thinks you're Liz Paul. He thinks I'm Liz Paul. He really does. <laughs> he's a sweetie. I got to meet him for a couple minutes. And uh, he wrapped his arms around my neck. Kissed me all, took all my makeup off. I look like BB with a spray up. I do. Actually, BB looked better than BB's spray up looked a little better than mine. And I'll tell you, the humidity is so different here in Florida from Pennsylvania, where I'm from. So I find I can't wear my hair very straight here because it kinks up right away. So today I thought, well, we're going with curly. Crazy curly today because at least it'll it'll maintain a, the same look all day. <laughs> he thinks I'm Liz Paul. Oh, now he's cool. This is a beautiful dog, guys. Oh, thanks, Debbie. You guys are awesome. Good morning, organic gal and Janelle. I'm so excited. I wish that I could spend more time with Suzanne every time I get together with her. But the nice thing is is I'm really getting familiar with Tampa. This is my second time coming to work with Suzanne, and I'm really getting comfortable with the surrounding areas, and I feel like I'm almost at home here, so it's gonna be easy for me to bop in and out on different weekends, and, and Suzanne and I can plan so many awesome trims for you. And don't forget, you're not gonna see me a whole lot on camera today because I'm gonna be actually filming for my YouTube channel for Go Groomer. <laughs> so that I can make standalone videos of what we're doing today. 
So Suzanne is all live, unedited, uncut today. So that is an aspect that you won't see on my channel. So it's, I'm glad you're here to see it firsthand. Uh, me too, Janelle. It's great, and I'm glad you guys enjoy it. I think that we have good, good karma together, and I've named us the dynamic duo, so. Here comes the monster mutt. Here's Mal. You want me to pick him up? No, I got it. Hi, Maui. Why do I not have water? Because you don't have water. Okay. Oh, I don't know, Maui. How's my big boy? He's right here. <laughs> He's so pretty. Hello, Amanda. Maui. Come here, baby. Come. Here. Good boy. You're going to be fantastic today. You got to have water pressure for this one. Yeah, you do. definitely do. Oh, and there she goes, lifting big dogs. <laughs> Here's Maui Wowie. He's beautiful. Say howdy, Maui Wowie. <laughs> All right, so in my tub, I have the small groomer's harness. We're going to be using the small groomer's harness on both big dogs today. So you can see this is the home groomer's harness for small dogs. And we're not using it on small dogs because it does fit <laughs> on large dogs. Oh, yeah, they are a lot of work. And as you can see, you need it because they're like, mm. oh yeah. But I don't have an anchor in the bottom of my tub for him. So, which helps to keep him from lunging upwards. So as you can see, the small groomer's harness fits a dog his size very nicely. I say it's only up to 20 pounds just because, but he's a good 45. Yeah. So... I'll tell you what, my bulldog, he's a small bulldog, but he's got a lot of girth. He's a big boy, and I, the, I use the small one on him, no problem. I had a friend of mine who has Newfoundland. She's also a certified groomer in Canada, and she fit our groomer's harness pro with the extenders on a 115-pound Newfoundland That's so with no problem. So I was very pleased to see that. It's nice for you to know. It doesn't like you can test it on everything. I can't breed, test it on big you know? dogs. But yeah. And that's why I don't really say how big it goes. I say that one goes to like 80 pounds, but she used it on a 115 pound newbie. So, and he's, she said he's got a big chest. So, he's got a big everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, with Maui today. <clears throat> Well, how are we approaching him in the tub, Suzanne? What, what products are we going to be using and why? I am using iGrown Prebiotic because Wheatons as a whole tend to have very sensitive skin. So I don't want to use anything that might be even the slightest bit irritating. So I trust iGrown Prebiotic immensely. Are we using conditioner too? Yeah. Okay. Prebiotic. Prebiotic shampoo and conditioner. This is it. Good stuff. Very good stuff. We are going to do him in the time frame that we would have if we were getting certified. Through the or, national government. Yes, or if we were competing. So after the bath and blow dry, and after the pads are trimmed, we're going to set the timer for uh, two hours. Mm -hmm. So we would get two hours on mm -hmm. because of his size. Right. So at the end of two hours, it scissors down. Right. Scissors down. <laughs> I can't touch him after that. Unless you you can comb. You can comb, but that's it, right? We can comb and we can clean off our table yeah. and stack our dog, and that's it. <laughs> I've groomed Maui since he was a baby. 
I gave him his very first haircut. I groomed oh. him all the way through his show career. He won a five-point major the weekend of the AKC National Championships, which I was very proud of. It should be. That was in really strong competition. Do we know how old Mally is? Uh, he's got to be four-ish. I have to look it up. Around four. So yeah. He's, he's on my, it's on my records. He's well, he was prime. two when he won the national championships. He's the same age as BB, so he's got to be four. Push him by. I thought you looked pretty young and funky, baby. Because he was at the championships the same year BB was. Oh, that's exciting. And BB won too. BB won. Did it the same one. BB won a five-point major and finished her grand championship at the AKC Nationals. Mm, this was a good weekend for both these dogs. Yeah. BB and Mally. Oh wow. That, that was awesome. fun. Oh, I can imagine. I didn't go to get to watch Maui. I just saw pictures. So. Right. Because it was a different day than BB. Oh no. Is that for BB? Watch him. I don't know. Probably delivery. Hi Maui. How's my big boy? No, you gotta stay, honey. You gotta stay. Good boy. Good boy. I know. Good boy. Gosh, he is so cool. You are such a... You should feel... You know one thing I love about terriers? Like, he's wet. You can see. They have... They're just substantial dogs. They're meaty. You know, like... You can feel the muscle even in his cheeks and his head. They're amazing. You know what, Maui? Soft-coated Wheatons are one of my favorite breeds. They're so fun and gorgeous. They needed to know if I wanted a flu and Bordetella vaccine on BB. Oh, and she's not due for rabies or anything else till September. So I said, yes, we want flu and Bordetella. And I get here. those for my dogs because they're at work with me every day. Yeah. And I have a vet next door and they get walked out front. Yeah. So I like to be sure my dogs are protected. No. Not that like sick that. dogs ever come in, but you never know. Sometimes you don't know. Just like with uh, COVID right now, sometimes people are carrying it and don't know. Sometimes people take their dogs to doggy daycares or go to dog parks. Or yeah. they were just in the vet's hospital. Like my dog's over at the animal hospital right now, so she's exposed to yeah. whatever may be in the in the hospital. Right. So you can be in the veterinary waiting room and your dog pick up something. You never know. No, you don't. And I'm not, I don't over vaccinate and I don't under vaccinate, but I do protect my dogs from whatever Especially with I the, think. the board of Tellens, <clears throat> you know. And we have dogs like him. him that come in. I've got clients who do still show their dogs. Mm -hmm. So they're at the dog shows and then they come here. Yeah, with their knees around a lot of dogs. You never know. Oh, Maui, are you looking at the camera? Are you a handsome boy? Oh, yes, you are. You're a good boy. <clears throat> Watch him again. Let me make sure it's not bad. Good boy, Maui. You stay, baby. Look how good he looks on camera. Can you guys see that? On my camera. It wasn't, but I need to keep the phone by me so I know when to pick That's it up. That's a good idea. So we're doing prebiotic shampoo and conditioner on Maui, which is an eye groom product. <coughs> One of Suzanne's favorite shampoos and conditioners for all types of dogs. It's my primary shampoo. Mm -hmm. It's the one I use on everybody unless they need a specialty shampoo. Yeah. I say, and I put my hands on him. They're, they're, they're muscular dogs. They're meaty. You can feel the muscles in his cheeks and his skull. Yeah. They're they, muscular. They've got a much meatier head than like a Kerry Blue. Oh, yeah. Sorry about the ringing. As soon as I, my vet calls that I can pick up my dog, I'll turn it off. Yeah. But I don't want her over there any longer than necessary. You guys can relate. She doesn't want to be over there any longer than necessary either. No. She wants to come home. Mm -hmm. 
so hand washing does take more time than using a Prima on a bigger dog. I don't use a Prima bathing system like Amy does because I primarily do dogs under 15 pounds. But when you get to a Wheaton, a Doodle, a Sheltie, a Collie, mm. a Newfoundland, you really need a tool like that. So my tools and my systems are based on what I normally do. Which is dogs under 15 pounds. I could have already been done with the bath. Right. If I used a Prima. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But another thing is, now, Suzanne loves this prebiotic shampoo. This is not a really a dilutable shampoo. No, so it has to be used full strength. Yeah, or this, should be. that shampoo would not be a good <clears throat> choice in the Prima system. Yeah. Prima works best with shampoos that are dilutable or concentrated. So this shampoo, the directions say... Apply Igram Prebiotic Shampoo on a damp coat, work into a rich lather, then rinse thoroughly, followed by Igram Prebiotic Conditioner for best results. So it does not say it's dilutable. It does not yeah. say to dilute. If it was, it would say, because then it would be too harsh if you are supposed to dilute it and you don't. Right, and that's where people who watch both Amy and I might get confused. Mm -hmm. They're like, Amy does one thing, Suzanne does another. We're using different products. We're using different systems. Yeah. And they're one's not right or wrong. They are both right. <laughs> they're tailored to our specific business. Exactly. Right, Mally? <laughs> and I and do want to say, I'm sorry, I was just going to say that uh, this is going to be a really, really great trend for everybody to see because we are doing it to the National Dog Groomers Association standards for certification, meaning that this dog is going to be completely hand scissored, completely. With thinning shears. Yes. Yeah. Which is, that's it, that's hand scissors. And the reason for that is the wheat and carrier coat can be ruined even by clippering, even by snap on combs. If the wheat and terrier coat is very specific to the wheat and terrier. The whole look of the wheat and terrier is very specific. And you can alter the texture of the coat with clippering it. Does that mean you can't clipper it? No. It means that correctly done and to keep correct texture and color, you do it one way. Most pet groomers can use snap-on combs, they can use blades, and I would for an everyday pet groom because that's more cost efficient. And the changes in the coat and color are only distinguishable in the show ring or to a breeder, not to the everyday pet owner. So when you hear those things, when you read those things, it's not absolute, but if you want get certified or if you want to compete you need to see how it's done that way too so there's just like Amy does one thing with shampoo and I do another thing with shampoo it's the same with clipping and grooming yeah you have absolute correct and then you have everyday pet grooming and they're the same but different mm -hmm. one is more expensive if I did an everyday pet groom on this dog it would be $90 if I do it correct, it's 180. Yeah. So, and the reason for that is the time involved. Hand scissoring a dog with thinning shears is time consuming. It also required you to obtain all that knowledge that not every pet groomer has. And it's harder on the groomer's body. Well, that's for sure. Going through a thick coat like this with thinning shears, yeah. chunk, 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 chunk. Mm -hmm. That's hard on our tendons, it's hard on our elbow, it's hard on our wrist. Yeah. And it can be life-changing. So, you know, like me. <laughs> yeah. Eventually it catches up to all of us, Suzanne. Come yeah, on. but I've been grooming 40 years right. professionally, so of course it's caught up to me. Yeah. And it was actually a wheat and terrier that injured my arm. It wasn't hand scissoring that did it. It was a rescue wheat and terrier. <laughs> was it just handling? Lifting? Uh, he had been through multiple trainers and multiple owners. 
and his current owner was trying real hard by hiring a bunch of trainers, but she was not doing her homework, obviously, because I saw her interact with her dog. So she was letting him get away with murder. Ooh. And he was out of control, and I went to put him in the tub, and I had the harness on him, but I didn't have it hooked up. When I put him in the tub, he leaped over my head, oh, and I had to catch a 50-pound dog oh. back here oh. and bring him back to the tub, and it ripped my tendon to pieces. Yep. Wow. So. That'll do it. <laughs> it pretty much disabled me, but I had to keep working oh. every day in my arms. Yeah. So, which didn't help the healing process. That was the summer that I quit doing all these dogs, all my heavy coated Bichons, all my cockers, everything. I I had to let go of about eighty regular clients that were amazing and that I oh, love. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I know people that have been with me twenty years. With and Bichons, the dogs you you bonded with, yeah. I couldn't do it. I yeah. couldn't do them. I was crying on the way to work because my arm was throbbing every oh. day just driving. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Mm. <clears throat> so one day I came to work and I had to let so many go all at once and they were all standing appointments oh. that I had to I had to text everybody, which isn't the best way to do it, but every time I tried calling somebody I'd cry. <laughs> Yeah, and then you also play phone tag, and you forget who you have talked to, who you right. haven't. It's tough. So, so then everybody was offended that I let them go by text. Aww. But it was the easiest way to break it initially, and then I was hoping we could have a conversation after the news was broke initially, yeah. which was a few I did, but some were so mad that I that's did it the way I did it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, that's understandable. That's tough one. But there were so many. Yeah. I had to do like a like a form text because yes. there were so many. And then to see who actually saw their text. <clears throat> and I had to do it that day. So it's mm -hmm. like before work, okay, I got to do this, bam, let's do it. You know. So I hope everybody out there understands, and especially two years later when you see me doing this, you know, like, know what? that I've healed quite a bit, yeah. but I know my limits. Yeah, because I know a lot of them are watching live, so I have to explain myself. Yeah, well, maybe now they'll understand a little too. <clears throat> yeah. So now I'm putting on the prebiotic conditioner, full strength. This doesn't weigh down the hair too much. It doesn't over condition. It doesn't under condition. It seems like every coat I use it on, it's the right balance, which is why I've made it my all-purpose yeah. I can use it on a Yorkie and they look silky. I can use it on a Bichon and they look fluffy. Which is cool. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and it's so gentle and so soothing that if I have a dog who starts off with red spots, by the time I blow or dry them, the red spots are gone. Well, that tells you a lot. Mm -hmm. And after you use it a few times on different coats <clears throat> and different breeds, <laughs> And you start seeing these results, that's how this product became her go-to. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not the cheapest that Hygrim offers. Yeah. But I go for what I like and put money aside on that because that's for me. It also makes your job easier. It does. Mm -hmm. Because it does a good job on the coat. That's one of the things, like, I spoil myself on, you yeah. know. And I spoil dogs. Yeah, they don't even know they're getting spoiled, but they are. They're getting, they're getting really good skin and coat rejuvenation. And what I really like about eye groom, and they hope they never change, is while it leaves a nice lasting scent on the dogs, it doesn't. It's not an overpowering s smell for the dog. Right, because their sense of smell is so intense and keen. Exactly, and so when you think about the dog, you don't want to use what's pleasing to people sometimes. That's true. You want to think about the animal. It's on them, and their sense of smell is like 10,000 times better than ours. So, you know, we want to think what is making them comfortable. Yeah. And if you watch me all the time, that's always my issue. What is making the dog comfortable? 
No, and that should always be our goals that we're trying to achieve as pet groomers. Ways to improve our services and the quality of our grooming experience for the dogs. He first does, and foremost. Right. He does get anxious when we turn on the blow dryer. And he paces back and forth and that's silly. Can we anchor him today just to help calm him? We may need to to keep them facing in one direction. And I honestly feel like it calms them. It does. Because when they're out of control, you're having to hold them in place. Yeah. And they're also, they get sent into a different state of mind. Yeah. And when they realize they can't move that much, it settles them. Then they're like, oh, okay, I guess we'll have to do this now. It does. It also helps with dogs who struggle with having their feet trimmed or their nails trimmed. And I do have a paw mat under him in the tub. Keep them from sliding around, keeping comfortable. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> now you notice I don't let products sit on too long. Part of that is that I am busy, so I am moving along quite quickly. And part of it is because I'm using products full strength that they're really getting a heavy conditioning or a heavy shampoo, right away. even though I'm not letting it sit on that long. Now, if, you, if I were at home or it were my own dog, sometimes I might, but you guys watch me wash my own dogs exactly like I do customer dogs. Yeah. And even if it's on my own time, I'm, I just do it that way. Is it better for the skin sometimes to let it sit on three to five minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're lifting off that layer and really helping the skin along. And putting back what you've, what you've taken out through mm -hmm. the shampooing process. And balancing the coat, too. Sometimes it takes a little bit for the conditioner to actually mm -hmm. seal that hair shaft back up so that it will mat less than so be a healthier hair shaft itself, which benefits. But if I let every dog sit for five extra minutes, every client would have to pay a minimum of five extra dollars. Time. If I let them sit for ten extra minutes, there'd be a minimum of ten extra dollars. Right. Because that's, that's right how my right time right down. down. Yeah. And most people, if you give them the option, they're like, mm, no, nah, it's not really necessary. Right. But if you explain to them why it would be necessary, they may say, oh, you mean that actually is, is rejuvenating his skin, it is, it is sealing the hair shaft so that he'll be easier for me to keep brushed out because, you know, whatever. That's we don't have time for all that. That's true, but we have to plan it ahead of time. Yeah. We can't have them decide on that when they get here. No. Because we got to plan our day. we got to schedule. So, I just kind of create this all-inclusive package mm -hmm. that works for everybody. So, we could create a deep conditioning package that they can choose. But it would have to be pre-selected during it the would. schedule. And it seems like the more choices I get, the harder it is to choose. Well, I'll agree with that. So, I try to keep everything simple. That makes sense. <laughs> simple and effective. Yes. Yeah. That's a tough one to balance sometimes. Okay, I'm wet. <laughs> That's the only thing about doing bigger dogs. We always get wet. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I'm rinsing in twice as long as I think I need to. Right now, we wowie. I will say on the on the subject of, of how we do get often we get a bath too, but the the grooming clothing that we choose to wear is designed to kind of wick away water as well as dry out quickly, instantly. Yeah, and it does. Thank goodness. And the hair doesn't stick to it, but they dry out really quickly. So if you're a home groomer, it's totally worth the investment on grooming day to buy yourself some grooming clothes. Yeah. And wear them 
Otherwise, you're going to be itchy. You're going to have hair stuck all in your jeans. Yeah. Um, it's hard to even get it out of the wash. You really, really want to invest in at least a smock. Definitely. And good possible shoes. Yes. Very important for grooming. Yes. I have, because you guys see I don't sit down all day, I have to have comfortable shoes. With a good support. Yes. And on one foot, I had a severely broken ankle years back with pins and screws and all that stuff. On the other foot, I completely tore a tendon. So, you know, my shoes have to be perfect. Yep. Last time I replaced shoes, I went through about seven pair before I found the ones that I could actually work in all day. I feel you on that. I've been there too. <laughs> So now I'm going to squeeze them out all over and make sure I don't feel any sliminess. If I do, I'll go back into those areas. Question, Check Suzanne. Mm -hmm. How do you know when your dog is clean? Um, how do you tell? Okay, he's good. He's clean. How do you tell? I know you know by the process you, you know how to get it done. Yeah. But there are ways when you touch the dog afterwards, you say, Ooh. Yeah, yes. like right here when I'm squeezing off, uh -huh. I feel something right here. So I'm going to go back in there and rinse. But if I shampooed them right and thoroughly into the skin, I know they're clean. Right. But if you don't rinse them thoroughly, they're not clean. Now because you're leaving up. product on there. And you can feel that. And that in the coat. Yeah, and that causes the dog to mat. It causes them to collect dirt and debris to quicker. Not, not dry as fast. Yeah, and they're greasy and funky. And you'll see that once they're dry and you go to trim them. The hair won't behave mm -hmm. the way you need it to. And that's why I check them by squeezing every inch of the body. I feel up under here. I feel under the arms. I feel behind the ears, mm -hmm. down the ear, and I still don't like the way that ear feels. <laughs> So that's how I do it. Yeah. And by conditioning every single dog like I do, or 99.9% .9 of the dogs, I give them a double rinse. So all the shampoo residue is surely rinsed. Yeah. And, and then I can feel if the conditioner residue is rinsed because I'll feel a slimy spot. Yeah. And a really good, clean, and well-conditioned dog will dry faster <clears throat> than a dirty dog and an unconditioned That's dog. That's a huge misconception yes. in the grooming industry. Is that if you condition a dog, they take too long to dry? No. If you use the wrong conditioner, yeah. it'll take too long to dry. If you don't rinse the conditioner properly, it'll take too long to dry. Yeah. A conditioned coat is light and fluffy and airy. And well balanced, mm -hmm. and it will dry faster. And the skin's healthier. I'm using Fetoquinol ear cleansing solution. I fill up each ear canal, rub the base of the ear, let them shake their head out, and then I wipe it out with cotton. You get I that don't, on Amazon, correct? Susan? I do. Okay. Because vets can sell on Amazon, and I can buy from a vet on Amazon. Yeah. That's the only because way it is it. a veterinary product, but it's not a prescription product. Or it has medicated. nothing in it that's medicated. Mm -hmm. If a dog, like say the Havanese that was here the other day that we did, who had the funky ears. We didn't do her live, but I have done her live before. I didn't use my ear cleaner in her because her ears are abnormal. Her owner needs to get a prescription and needs to bring her ear cleaner with her. So mm -hmm. that what I use in her ears, in case her eardrums are compromised, was prescribed by her dad. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll put nothing in there. I'll leave it. Yeah. Which is better than sending something the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Because we don't know the, the condition of the eardrum. We're not vets. Yeah. We're not using an otoscope and going in there and looking. And it's not our job to. And we're not trying to even know what we're looking at. If we right. look inside, down in the dog's ear. Even if I had one. It's yeah. not my business to be right. looking inside the dog. 
It's not my business to diagnose the dog. It's not my business to treat the dog. Right. It's not my business to clean out infected ears. That's that's not me. That's the best. That's a medical condition. Yeah. Exactly. But that being said, a well cared for ear doesn't need to be plucked. True. And it I mean, some people do, but his ears aren't plucked. And you can see he's a Wheaton, which Wheatons are famous for allergies and skin issues. Look at these well cared for ears with hair in them, they're but they're perfect. So this is why, you know, if I plucked his ears, he might start head shaking because he's a Wheaton and because he's sensitive and they're prone to allergies. So I just leave them. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yes. Clean them and that's that. That's that. So we're going to start drying him until the vet calls, and I'm going to put him up, or let I'll let Amy dry him for you guys. Okay. Hey, how am I supposed to film what? Oh, if you go get BB. Yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll be live on my channel, and we can go back to filming later. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. It'll only I get, take a minute. I get you. I dropped her off, so she's getting everything done. I don't have to go back and talk yeah. to the vet. That's one of the handy things about having a vet next door. I was going to stop using them, but I decided to keep Well, because your vet passed away. That, so you thought, yeah. That and I had an issue with the vet techs, uh, letting their dogs run loose outside. Oh, I would have a major. There's cars everywhere out in that parking lot. Well, it's not only that. They got big dogs, and I got little dogs on a leash who bark at big dogs. Yeah, sure. Antagonize. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. My dogs go, wah, 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 Oh, yeah. Wah. And a five-month-old Great Dane off-leash breaks his heel, and he comes bounding over like, yeah. hey, you want to play? And I'm like, I don't know if you're nice or not. Right. He's probably fine. I well, don't know. But I'm not going to take a chance. Yeah. And I see your matting that Mama was talking about. It's in a harness pattern. Sorry, I want to get it. <gasps> ah, and that's why. A little harness bit of matting. Harness padding. Matting. Yeah. He's got some here. He's got some here. In his flank, right the here. tender areas that right people here. don't like to brush. See They're the tender. Mats? Oh, he's got mats. <laughs> oh, yeah. darn it. Oh, what? Got Big his legs. Oh, oh my. my boy. So, he's not going to like me today because Mama didn't brush good. <laughs> enough. Good enough. <laughs> it's hard. She knew she didn't. I she says, this. I tried. Yes. She tried to brush him. And she said he has 9,000 more mats. <laughs> Let's hope not. 9,000 is a lot. <laughs> that was her words, not mine. Yeah, I know. I heard. Let's see. Where would be best to put everybody I'm over here? Up against the wall. Like this? Uh, let's see. We'll go right here. Hi, Molly. Good boy. Oh, good boy. You smell nice, sweetheart. I know. I love the smell of prebiotic. You smell Especially very good. Especially once they're dry. It has this yeah. soft odor that lasts for days, well, and it just sink my nose into my dog's hair. I've noticed. Yeah, I noticed that. I used because I was holding on mine. I was holding Ammo a lot yesterday, and he did smell so good. No, no odor at all. Very neutral <clears throat> smell. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Can you come stand here with him for a second? Yes. I need to get an adjuster for my harness. It's okay, bud. Let me get a feel for you. Yeah, we got some mats underneath. Hey, we'll work it out, baby. We'll work it out. They do have a soft coat, hence the soft coated wheat and terrier. So it can <coughs> do mat fairly nicely. Depending on the severity of it. Well, yes, they, they often get a little cantankerous about brushing. Mm -hmm. They're a very sensitive breed. Yeah. Because they're sensitive, they show their fanny. Yeah. And when a dog has been dematted repeatedly, they make up their mind they really, really don't like it. Yeah. So. Is that so, baby? Is that so? I like you. <laughs> You're a good boy. All right. So I'm going to start drying with a pin brush, and even though that's not your best matting brush, um, let's say that again in a second because I need to get that on film. 
All right, so I'm gonna start drawing in with a pin brush. My technique of blow drying, because I don't do a pre-bath brush out and I'm starting from a super wet coat, I start with the gentlest brush possible till they're about 90% dry. Then I switch to my harsher brush. If I were force drying, I would brush them out in advance with a harshest brush, like a dematting brush in those areas, or my Artero Long Pen Slicker, because I'm working with a dry coat, which doesn't have the skin that's more pliable and sensitive because it's sopping wet. Mm -hmm. So it's completely backwards when you blow dry straight from the tub and when you demat straight from the tub. You go with your softest brush first, not your harshest brush. Especially since we're using a fluff dryer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm gonna get him all this broken up and I can see where all the mats are and they're not pretty. Somebody <sighs> wants to be on camera really bad. <laughs> yeah, so gonna how about it. it? Can I help? Because I can leave this on, which will. <clears throat> this will mic you? I don't think so. Because that will overwhelm him, I think. And we've got four hours, and we don't have to start the time clock until he's fully brushed, dried, yeah. washed, and we're not cast. going to do a guess how long because of the mats. Yes. Because that's the thing, guys. If a dog is matted, we groomers can't estimate how much it's going to cost you to demat your dog because we don't know if it's going to take 10, 15, 20, no. 30 minutes. No. I'm estimating 30 minutes of dematting here. So, but I don't know. Yeah. It could go really fast or really slow. So These look me. bathed in. He looks like he's gotten wet. So he, he's either gotten wet or bathed and they, were, they weren't removed. Right. Which makes them worse. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to get him mostly brushed and not dematted. Mm -hmm. And this is going to break up all the loose curls. It's going to loosen up everything, and I'll memorize where the mats are, and then I'll go in and attack those. That sounds like a really good plan. It's easy to see them when it's wet, so you can kind of say, oh, I see the worst of it. Exactly. Yeah. Even with the big dogs. 
it's worth it to me. So when I get into these mats, I can break them apart with my fingers as I go. Okay. So I'm just going to break it up. Unweb it. So I can't use my normal technique where I go in and take off the top now. Yeah. Because of the haircut we're doing, we need the full length of coat. Yes. So as you can see that big one there, it's going away quickly. Even with a pin brush. Yes. Now it's quicker. But you, you've got to break it. Yeah. And it's not hard. No. Uh -uh. So we'll do the same thing in here. I'm going to stand him up for this one. Uh -uh. He doesn't like this area. But you can blame him. It's uncomfortable. It's very tender. So I'm just breaking it. I'm not pulling on the skin. I'm like pulling here and breaking out off the skin so I'm not pulling the skin. That's making it more comfortable for now. Because masks get locked. You have to unlock them. When you say locked, they get wound into themselves. Yeah. So I'm pulling out away from the skin so it doesn't pull on me. And I'm just picking. And a weak interior is supposed to have weight to his coat. So it's okay if he dries out ahead of me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not worried about the way, but I'm sure a weak interior is going to have poodle. weight. <laughs> yeah. We'd be, we'd be spinning that, going around that poodle like crazy. Trying All to right. keep it from curling. Yeah. So I can focus a little bit here with the pin brush. Now I'll go back with my long pin slicker too to get out any loose coat. So this isn't going to get out all the loose coat on this coat type, but I can't use it to help pick apart the mask. Oh yeah. And this, damage the cold. this pin brush, the Madden pin brush, okay. this is a firm. And oh, so it is a little firm. It is. You want to try it on? Hold your just feel the pull it has. Yeah, it does the, you can feel it's not it's not giving. It's not like a Chris Kristen thing yeah. where it's like the pins bend. Yeah, I can feel that. It's got enough oomph yeah. to brush the dog out. So that's why I always recommend this one because it's got some oomph to it. I used to use What's the name of that again? I'm Madden. M-A-D-A-N. They're hard to find. You can't find them on Amazon. I get them at LaneyLTD.com. I do not turn it. So I have to look that up. The Color Coordinated Canine. If okay. you pull up the Color Coordinated Canine, you can find them. They have specialty products. Okay. I, I do like that. And I also heard you say yesterday that you've had that brush for many years. And the pin hasn't come loose. Yes. It, nothing's bent. Nothing's lost. It, it's very well made. I use it every day. Yeah. Yeah, because usually when you buy a pin brush, it breaks the pad, comes out. Sure. And the pen, you see that pen laying on the table? They sell these at dog shows, too. All okay. the show dog people, the Maltese and such, use that. I don't worry about his antsiness. I just ignore it. Yeah. So now I'm going to pick apart this side. Here, you go over there. He loves you. Yeah. What the gets owner wrote about us yesterday? No, she was a real sweetheart. She gave us a real big shout out and put up our picture on. On her social media? Yeah. Aww. 
I'll need to start, I'll need to follow her. Yeah. That's, that's then I, I, I send you the link. Yeah, I would love to follow her and pick it. Yeah, she does amazing things with the I saw that from your, you sharing. She does rally with all the fun rally stuff. Have you ever seen rally? Not live. Not live. I've seen on YouTube. I'll have to show you some of Ambo's rally. He hasn't even practiced his rally in a year, but I'll show you some Oh, he won't forget it. No. Anytime I ask him of it, he goes right back to it. Oh, yeah. Because that was fun for him. He loves it. Yeah. They don't forget those things that they love. I'm he loves the work, but he doesn't like going to the dog clubs. He gets... He's got some, he's got a, a collapsing trach here, I heard and you can hear it act up when he gets excited, and he gets too excited. It's a happy excitement, but it's not a healthy excitement. Not especially when it triggers that narrow. You can see a little blueness to his tongue. And he's like, so he's having trouble getting to regulate his air. Because he's when a, he gets that excited, he's a very hyped up dog. Yeah. So. I give up some things that I love and he loves because it's the best thing to do. I agree. I'm going to get my kind of safe and battery life here. But he, that aside, we uh, we practice it every day to some degree, a little bit. Just, just for his time. But not to get out of he all the way there. Yeah. And we didn't do five yeah. minutes a day. Oh, I, I bet. I could see that in him. Isn't he great? Isn't he great? So the best time to break these apart with your fingers is when they're really wet. Yeah, because they're more pliable. Exactly. Yeah, I can help with that. Yeah. They're more pliable when they're wet. We have this one. I know we got it on the other side. They're more pliable and you can see them better. Yes, and definitely see them better when they're wet. If you want to pick at it with the other brush, you can. I'll just go around and separate. I don't want to take him off. Because he doesn't, he doesn't mind him picking up hard. He's yeah. got some on the back of the front legs, like right here. Okay, good. Why don't you make me? Sorry. Don't listen to me. Here, you want to work on the back end? I'll do the front end. Oh, you can kiss you so much. I don't mind the kisses. <laughs> He's obsessed with you. He's like, I'd rather hang out with you than be crushed. <laughs> That's what he's thinking. Exactly. Yeah. And not a compromise in any way. That's 
really important. That's what I like about it too. And I like it that they can lay down and nothing's pulling on their throat. Yes. Let me work on these. He's protecting his legs. This is getting drier back here, so and the brush is face down. Yeah. Over here, Mal. This way. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I know, she's over there. She loves you. Here, Mal. He's attached himself to you. He thinks that I'm his security through this process. Mal, come here. So, what I do with this is I grab the harness. Let me lower him. It's a language that he understands certain words. So you don't think of it like you're training him for core obedience. Yeah. You think of it like you're teaching your dog a language that's universal. At the vet, at the groomer. Heal, Heal, sit, yeah. down, wait. You know, a couple tricks for fun. You know? And that way, he knows when I say wait, he stops. He knows when I say stand, he stands. Or I say stay, he stays. You know, current thought is obedience, submission, you know, all that stuff is bad. It's not. Oh, no. It's self-control. It's, it's healthy. And it's communication. So rather than holding his beard, I hold this and then I put my thumb on the side of their face over here. Yeah. So yeah. I can hold this and stick the beard. It feels very natural too. Mm -hmm. He would probably get a little pissy if you were strictly holding him by the beard. Then he would be ripping your hands off of his face yeah. with his claws. Like this. Mm -hmm. Yes, he would. That's a terrier move. Typical terrier move. And anybody who works with Wheaton's knows that they're goofy. <laughs> they're very full of themselves and they're okay with that. And they're a big terrier. They are, and they're strong. All right, I'm going to switch to the other brush. I'm going nowhere. So now I'm switching to the Artero Long Pen Flicker. This is going to go deeper and firmer. You want to wait for that? I do. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying to stay fat in life by turning this off whenever I can. Okay, so now he's partially dry. His skin is not as wet and pliable. So now I'm switching to the Artero Long Pin Slicker. This will remove any dead undercoat. It'll sink down and straighten this hair out. And it'll just get a good deeper, firmer brushing. And this is my favorite brush for dogs with two inches or more of hair that need a firmer brush. Like, if a dog has hair, like a parted drop coat that's going down to the floor, it's pin brush only. If it's two, three, or four inches, I'm going to use a long pin slicker. That's if it's under two inches, then I'm going to use my flexible slicker. Or my harder de matting brush or my Activet brush. Mm -hmm. Those are all good choices. Depends on the length of coat. But you need longer pins. And see the pin brush didn't pull out the hair? Right. This is getting the soft, downy undercoat that's ready to come out. 
that you have to remove. At some point during the day of the groom. It can be before the bath, it can be after the bath, but it's gotta be that day. Yes. Yes. You because can't hand scissors. Anytime you wash your clothes at home, you can't leave it to the next day. Right. You have to get this out same day. You do. And this is probably why you had some some lingering low mass. I mean it's it's a lot of weakness this coat. It is. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. And she's been keeping him shorter to maintain him. Sure. And, and, I, and I grew his hair out for this video. Yeah. So she committed to help us with the video, but it was a lot of work for her to try to maintain this at home. So she's going to go back shorter. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't blame her. Into a more clipper pet trim. Yeah. Now you're doing this to other wheat and terriers. <coughs> and we just... So since he doesn't like his feet being held, I'm going to leave his feet on the floor and brush down. Mm -hmm. He's going to be goofy about that. So now we're going to anchor him because he's being yeah. a butthead. Yeah, you're going to have to. Come here, bud. This will keep him from raising up. And I'm going to lock this down on him so he can't wiggle out of it. I'm going to bring an anchor up. <laughs> now my regular anchor does not work on this table so I can figure oh, out something. Yeah, it doesn't clamp on right, does it? No, it's too wide of a table. It does on mine, so don't forget I need to go home. I got one. Okay. <laughs> so I just made something that works. Yeah, and you can always make something that works, guys. Don't forget that. You can always make something that works. So let him lay down while he's anchored. I don't want him to come up. It's okay if he goes down. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about the harness. I can use the anchor and keep more control and still let the dog lay down. Because this is going to be a long groan. Yes, it is. So I want rest to relax. relax. Yeah. Instead of being all crazy throughout it and wearing himself out. And that's what drives me crazy about Sometimes groomers say a dog has to stand in the middle of the table and get groomed. They don't. Let your dog be comfortable as much as possible and they'll be a better subject for you. I agree. Good boy. And when they make the right decision, be sure to praise them. You can't you can't say no, 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 and then when they make the right decision, ignore them. It's it's like a child. You got to tell them that was what was I like. Good. Yeah. And you can do it with touch or words. So it was fun. Well, she well. started praising him immediately with her hands, and I gave him a good. Or sometimes I'll slip him a treat. <laughs> Which he already said he doesn't like my salmon, so I'll come up with something else. I don't think I would want salmon either, but <laughs> so he's standing up and I didn't say anything because I'm letting him make that choice. But he can't whip around and he can't use his front feet too much and he can't launch himself up with his rear because he's anchored. He would be doing all of the above if he wasn't anchored. He's yeah. already shown us that. Yeah. He's persistent. And he's thinking about it. He's like, yeah. wait, what? He's like, why can't I do this? And all those moves are evasion techniques. Those are not that he's hurting. It's not that anything's bad. He's trying to evade. And we're blocking him. So today, the giveaway... There's another giveaway. There's a giveaway for the um, the uh, guest time on the doodle blow dry. We're going to do that the dog today. We're doing that for this guy. You'll have a choice of two things. One thing would be a notes from the grooming table book. Aww. You can choose. Or a gift card of uh, 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 e-card 
that you can use that would be for the same value, and I believe they sell for $59.95. Wow. So whoever guesses the exact dry time of the doodle without a high velocity dryer, just a stand dryer, Exact That's what time. You get. Exact time. And the first one to guess. The there first may be one. multiple of the same, but the first one yeah. to guess and types it in the chat. And if you guess ten times, I'm only going to take the first one. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll give you the start time to start guessing. So don't start guessing now. No, this is the second dog we're going to groom, the doodle. Yes. But I figure a lot of you aspiring groomers would love to have that notes for the grooming table book. It's a fantastic one. Yeah. Absolutely. So, that's what you get. Well, I'll tell you what. I wish that people like you were around when I was learning to groom because I had no money. And I had to save a lot for every book. Yeah. And every show that I would go to just to attend one seminar. I could never afford the VIP package. Never. I wanted to. And when I was learning to grow, there was no YouTube, no internet, you know, and nobody wanted to share, no iPhone, shit, no, <laughs> you had to, <laughs> you had to bathe all their dogs for free to get one tip. And what I had to do to learn how to grow some dogs is I go to dog shows, mm -hmm. and I would very annoyingly, yeah stand off in a corner and stare at a handler grooming a dog until I annoyed them to the point where they were giving me dirty looks and I'd move on to another one. Yeah, I know what you mean. So I'd sit there and stare. Now you guys get to stare without annoying anyone. That's right. We're not annoyed. <laughs> so I've got the dryer turned down on low, which is taking me longer, but he's highly noise sensitive. So I'm trying to keep him comfortable and keep him from getting stressed. Yeah. But he's trying very nicely. That's even on low. Uh, even on low. Just like we talked earlier about the fact that he is so, so clean and so well conditioned. His coat is well conditioned. He is drying faster than he would if it weren't. And something I strongly disagree with that many groomers in groups talk about, mm -hmm. fast drying sprays. Yeah, I don't use them. And those who don't want to spend money on fast drying sprays, sprays are mixing vinegar <laughs> and spraying it on all the dogs to get them to dry faster. You know, there's a couple reasons why vinegar is not good. Uh, yeah. For one, it is antifungal. It's not the best antifungal, but your dog's natural sebum Natural is, flora is antifungal for the dog. So when you put that in, oh, that's right. Vinegar strips it out. Have Be you careful. ever seen what vinegar does as a cleaning agent? Stripping off calcium deposits and lime. Yeah. And all that. And think stuff. about what that'll do to a sensitive hair follicle and hair shaft. Not to mention the smell. They say it dissipates. No, it doesn't. Now. And they say that it's very neutralizing. It, it smells not. like vinegar. Yeah. It neutralizes everything else to smell like vinegar. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. So I strongly disagree with that concept. Personally, if somebody did that to my dog, I would be unhappy. Yeah. Because they would be messing up the natural flora on the dog's skin. Yes. Causing it to be vulnerable and prone to problems. And some people use homemade ear cleaning solutions, including vinegar. Yes, I do not because, number one, yeast is highly affected by vinegar, so it does help kill yeast and prevent yeast, but if you're using it on client dogs and the dog has a yeast infection in its ears, as soon as you dump that vinegar in there, what do the yeast do? They go crazy, <laughs> wiggling around in the dog's ear, and the dog's like, ah, get this out of my ears, and they're shaking yeah. their head. It burns a little bit, too. Yeah. If, it, if there is an irritation down in there that you don't know, you can't see down in there, that vinegar or will a burn. a ruptured eardrum. Oh, it will burn like crazy mm -hmm. to them. So and because we can't see down in there, we need to be very mindful of what we do in the ear. Not only that, as professional groomers, if you use a homemade preparation and a dog has a ruptured eardrum 
and the vet wants to know what you put in the ears, and you say you put in a homemade solution, you're in deep, yeah. deep doo-doo. And you are liable for that. I mean, really, guys, you caused it. We are, we are professionals, and we want to be professionals. So we got to stay in our lane. It's very important. Because we are viewed as professionals, which means we're responsible for what we do to these dogs. Everything that we do, we're responsible for that. So become as knowledgeable as you can be. When he gets done being blow dried, I'm going to put him up and let him take another pee break because he is a pee monster. Okay. Okay, buddy. Aren't you? He probably would like to hit the reset button after his blow dry anyway. Yeah, give him a break. Let yeah. him rest. Yeah. We got plenty of time. We got four hours scheduled for him. So we'll give him a break. <coughs> and I'll make some coffee. Maybe my dog will be ready to pick up at the bed. That would be a perfect timing if she was. So even with the matting, I have not cleaned out the brush yet. Mm -hmm. This is all the loose coat he's had so far. Which is good, because Mama did a pretty bad brush out. Yeah. And loosened everything up for us. Sure. Definitely did. Not your favorite thing, but you're a big boy. We interiors are highly sensitive animals. Highly sensitive. Right, but you know, wouldn't you say like the mini schnauzer? They really are too. Most terriers are, yeah. People think terriers are stubborn, noxious, pushy, obnoxious, hard to train. It's a sensitivity. Thing They're so everything. sensitive that they it's like people who you know who are obnoxious, but they're super sensitive and they're covering up their Sensitivity with obnoxiousness. Yeah, that's that's a good way to look at it. They can be they can appear boisterous, but they're really sensitive. Yeah, they take it all. They take it all to heart. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, I do I can put myself out here like this, but I'm super super sensitive, and things yeah. crush me very very easily, as yeah. you guys have probably noticed, because I put myself out here. But I hate negative comments and all that stuff. I shouldn't let it bother me, but it does. And I shouldn't tell you that, because now you're going to do it. <laughs> no, you guys You're won't. building a, an audience that loves you. I know. And that's fantastic. It is. And I love you guys, too. Yeah, you guys are actually motivating the people like Suzanne. You're motivating her to share more, share more, share more. Because we feel safe. Yes. There's a big sissy baby. Maui's going to be a daddy soon. He's neutered, but before he got neutered, they collected him, and he has frozen semen. And he just had some shipped to Canada and to the UK. That's so awesome. there's going to be Maui babies out there. He's going to be international. Worldwide, baby. Nationwide. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> and that's really nice that you can do that. You can have your dog neutered as a house pet. Yes. And so but as a champion, with save this sperm, we can continue to produce wonderful specimens of the breed. Exactly. Have the cake and eat it too. That's right. He says, "Yeah, but you took all the fun out." <laughs> He's like, "Those are the best play dates." <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, I gotta remember what. He's got a scar this ear. I gotta cosmetically groom this ear. His sister bit off the tip of his ear. Yeah, here. Oh, was she a weedy? Yeah. Uh huh. A senior. Oh. And he tried to take her bone, and she's like, "Oh no, you don't." Friends, doll pet grooming. This is Suzanne. May I help you? Hi.
Okay. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. Awesome. That's great. How come now? Um, and we've already got her scheduled for a dental. I know it's not bad, but I figure I want to stay ahead of it. She's a voracious chewer. She's like four years old and she's never had a dental. But, yeah, but I don't want her losing those front teeth if I don't have to. So, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Thank you. I love that one. The vet says her teeth look beautiful. Yeah. What she's, got, different, though? she's got tartar in her front teeth, and poodles tend to lose those front teeth. Yeah. So yeah. she's a voracious chewer, and her molars look great. Yeah. But I just don't want her losing teeth. Yeah, if I don't have to. I agree. Toy poodles, they can look great in them. Yeah. So do you want a brush on him, or do you want me to yeah. put him up? Um, I will. If he starts to get crazy, I'll just turn the dryer off and hang out with him, because I normally have my dog's harness a little tighter on the table. Well, here. we can raise him up. Okay. This Shrimbeo dryer a lot. I really don't need another fluff dryer because my Ademco is like iron clad. It's never gonna die. And it does a good job for me. And I like this one better. It's just got a little bit newer technology. But you know, it's about $850, and I have to say. Should I do that? Should I invest? Or should I invest in more things like trip to Tampa? Trip, more trips to Tampa for learning purposes and for my YouTube channel and my followers to become better old groomers and professional groomers. So I'm very careful about where I spend my money and have to decide what's the What's the best use of my money that I made from YouTube and from Korea? Otherwise, I'd have one of everything, guys, because I have a real problem when it comes to grooming equipment and tools. I love so many things. But we have to, we have to think about what's, what's going to make me the most difference in the way we choose to spend our money. Good job, honey. You're going to get a break real soon, okay? I know. Hey, so, you're good. Now, I know you, buddy. You can do it. Then this is why your mom 
mom has trouble brushing you because it won't work with her. You need to. You need to do a better job. You're capable. You're a smart cookie. You can't, you can't fool me. There's a lot of brains in this meathead right here. <laughs> see what we're doing a little better careful now he might give you some kisses a little bit and then I'll go to a place that he's more tolerant just so he knows oh I, I tolerated that you know let him win a little bit right it's kind of good for their psyche like he's not going to like this so watch how I handle it right now I'm going to move right away to another area. So he just did a good thing right there and he knows oh I tolerated it. I did good. Especially him. It's just the way he is. He's just He doesn't like it. Yeah, 82 likes, 145 watching. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, buddy. He is a super duper awesome guy. Good boy, Maui. Up. Good. Good boy. Good boy. When you're brushing around a dog's pee pee, I often will just hold on to it, not in a weird way. Hold it so I know I'm not going to scratch at it. It's under my hand right now. It's a sensitive area. He appreciates me protecting his pee pee. Don't you, buddy? Hey, thanks. Thanks. I know, baby. Boy, we're lucky to have uh, this dog to work with today. He is a beautiful specimen of the breed. So, uh, thank you, Mom, for letting us work with him today, and thank you, Suzanne, for arranging this and for being willing to work on these larger dogs that 
have taken a toll on her over the years. So we can learn. Wait till she trims them. You guys are going to be mind blown. So why? As usual, when Suzanne's working, she blows my mind. Good job. So, the cost of veterinary care. It's a lot. <laughs> The cost of veterinary care. Two years ago, I was paying $60 for a well check yearly without the need of distemper or rabies or anything, right? Last year, I paid $90 for a yearly checkup yeah. without the need of distemper or rabies because I do three year. Today, can anybody guess what I just paid? What all did they do? Yearly checkup with blood work. Yearly checkup with blood. What do I? What do I get if I win? If I guess. Mm. <laughs> Nothing. Company with me. <laughs> okay. So a checkup with blood work. I'd say the blood work was probably two hundred. This didn't include the the Bordetella or the canine flu. Just, just a, a checkup. checkup yearly checkup work. with blood work. One hundred and twenty for the checkup. Two twenty for the blood work. 176.28. Oh, our bets are a little cheaper than yours. Ouch! It is. Ouch! It is a little, is a little bit. She's not a senior. It was a junior annual package. Ouch! Talking together and working on Maui. Okay, what was she doing while I was gone? I was actually working. I was working hard. On my baby. <laughs> I'm breaking a sweat. What time's break time? <laughs> as soon as I can get a comb through him. <laughs> he was um, he was trying to be as good as he could. It went well. He didn't do anything crazy. Our friends were very supportive of him and I. It was nice. We had a good moment together. So he's got some mats up underneath. Now that he is dryish, now I can start putting some pressure into this brush and start acting like I'm dematting. So it's backwards from your normal routine. And when I get to this point, we can turn the dryer all the way down cool so that any final dampness that might be in this coat while I'm doing the dematting and the final comb through, I can keep him cool, keep me cool. Just because the dryer's on doesn't mean it's hot. And you turned it down to cool. It's ice cold okay. right now. Because I like to keep it blowing on the coat and showing separation of the hair and seeing where the dematting or where any matting might be. I'm going to go ahead and unhook him from down here right now. I can turn him around. Actually, let me give him a little more length too so he can move out. All these arms lately, they're making so short and weird in the middle. They don't come out to the middle of the table anymore. You're right, and not all of our clips fit in there right. I know. So I got a different one today from the one I was using mm -hmm. yesterday. So that it wouldn't get stuck. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Yesterday I was a little funky, but... And I wasn't used to using this table for this arm, so everything was off. I'm really sinking my brush in deep and brushing hard because the skin's not wet. And the skin's not as sensitive right now. 
and it's not catching his skin because the hair is dry, so now the hair is blocking this brush from reaching all the way down, too. His coat is protecting him. Yes. And that's what it's meant for. It is what it's meant for. Mm -hmm. Do you know that's why many wire hair breeds are designed to have wire hairs for protecting them at underbrush when they're doing work? Yeah. Isn't that cool? I wish my hair had more of a purpose other than just to bring back the AIDS. <laughs> Lucky you. You could be stuck with my hair. Hey, look, lady, don't forget about Aquanet. Come on, I know you used to do it. We all did. I wasn't an 80s baby. I was, my time was in the 70s, so I could have floppy hair. Oh, yeah, floppy hair. We had that. silky floppy hair. Yes, yes. And it was cool. It was, along with your big bell bottoms. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get out my matting brush for this mat. Where is it at? On your side? The mat. Yeah. The mat. So I'm using the Blake Pooch matting brush to get in here and really get this one. And he ain't going to like it. It's in a sensitive area. Yeah. It's right in his plank almost at his hip. Stay. See you at home in that door. <laughs> yeah, he is. You know, all in all, he didn't he dematted very easily. Yeah. They weren't severe mats. They weren't severe matted to the skin and just mm -hmm. melted, you know. If he was, I wouldn't have done it. Sure. So I'm basically using one corner of my brush because I don't want to drag the whole brush through it. So yeah. it makes it softer and gentler to him. It's picking it with the corner. Even though it's a big mat, it's, it's, it's gentler to pick it out a little at a time. Yeah, it feels better to him. And now I'm just gonna feel over him. I'm gonna see if there's any big ones left before I start combing. Wonder spray and the reason why I'm going to use the wonder spray is he has been clippered and the coat that we want to bring about today needs to be a little sulkier and I want my comb to glide through his hair as easily as possible so his coat's kind of cottony that's not his natural texture that's his being cut shorter texture that's it what happens. changes the texture of the coat right yep so when they I'm gonna lightly mist over him with wonder spray this will give a light, oily texture that's going to absorb into his hair. That's going to add a little slip mm -hmm. to the, when you're combing. To make my comb just glide. And the reason why Amy was thinking maybe we should use this when we go to do Madame, the reason why I didn't want to do it then is because I wanted to do it now. So I didn't want to use it while he was wet because I didn't want to over condition him. Yeah, that makes sense. So see how this, if you come up close, you can see the oiliness on the coat. But it'll is, dissipate. It'll dissipate just like it disappeared on the mirror. Yeah, we did a test on that yesterday and it completely dried to nothing. You couldn't see it. So it's giving his no coat a shine and it's giving this comb the ease of just flowing through the hair. Which is really cool. Look at that shine. Yeah, I'm very impressed with that product. I've been getting me. And a it's going to be disappearing here in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Except for a little bit of shine when he goes out in the sun, it's just going to sparkle. But look that's how, not a bad thing. Look how it laid him down. Yeah. Without weighing him down. Exactly. Yeah. Very that's, important. That's the whole point. 
Yeah. But you got to know which coat to use it on. I wouldn't use it on, say, Maltese with a very silky flowing coat. It would be too much. It would weigh down too much, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. So I'd use it on a Bichon or something like him or the Doodle today, Doodle yeah. trim today. I think it'll go really good on Charlie, our Doodle that we're going to do, or whatever he is. Whatever he is. <laughs> It's a doodle haircut. <laughs> we don't know what kind of... Well, we're not saying much more. No. <laughs> it's a doodle trim. <laughs> yes. You guys get to guess what breed he is. But yes. we're not revealing it until my video comes out. Yeah, we're not revealing it today. We're going to reveal it when the video comes out. Mm -hmm. At the end of the video. So you have to watch the video. To see what kind of dog he is. Is he a Labradoodle? Is he a Golden Doodle? Is he a Cocker Poodle Doodle? Is he a Sheep -a Doodle? <laughs> is what, he, what is he? Is he a Pyrenees -a Doodle? You know, is he a Newfie Doodle? Yeah, they're they're doing that in PA. Are they doing they're that doing part? giant schnoodles. Yeah, giant schnauzers and standard oh. poodles. Oh. Wow. Well, now that's a mix. I'm not sure if that would be a. Deadly concoction. <laughs> We've got an extremely smart guard dog. Bull headed, yeah, guard dog. Exactly. With a mess of a heavy coat and very big canine teeth. <laughs> all right, so we got all those mats out during the blow dry. We saved the time of the pre bath brush out by blow drying him by hand. We were able to thoroughly brush him. So I used the brush. I got one small brush full of coyote out. Mm -hmm. Now the comb has removed this shedding hair. This is not this is not hair that pulled out. This is hair that was loose that needed to come out. So this is the wide comb. This is the Chris Christensen 004. Mm -hmm. Now I need to go back through with the fine tooth comb mm -hmm. to make sure all the loose hairs are removed. The secondary hairs that are just hanging in there. Yep. Undercoat. Yeah. So he would be considered a medium coat. Correct, Mercedes? Like that, that heavier ratio of second to top coat, or would you consider him a long coat? That's a tough believe, one. I've been thinking about it. <laughs> I believe if you hand me the book over there, we can find that answer. Because I read that this morning. I know. So it's fresh. Okay, so... The coat goes through a natural progression of change from puppyhood to maturity, but should be a clear wheat in color by 18 to 24 months of age. The coat is a distinguishing characteristic of the breed, which sets the dog apart from all other terriers. An abundant single coat. Single. So he's a long like coat. Like a Maltese. He's a long coat. Yep. Yeah. yeah. An abundant single coat okay. covering the entire body legs and head coat on the latter falls forward to shade the eyes the texture is soft and silky with a gentle wave in both puppies and an adolescents the mature wavy coat is generally not evident major faults woolly harsh crisp cottony frizzy kinky or stand away coat in the adult and a straight coat is often a, a, also objectionable now his coat was very correct when he before he was clippered a little bit shorter and that's what we mean by clippering can alter the coat a little bit so you say it made him a little softer it made say? him a little cottonier because he was cut shorter to help mom maintain his coat he's no longer being shown it doesn't matter except yeah. if you're going in the breed ring and you need to need to make sure what the judge feels is absolutely correct so yeah. he's a single coat. Okay. But I'm a single coat and I still shed. Yes. See, that's where it gets confusing. It does. It does. So that's why we're removing loose hairs that are caught up inside the other hair. We're not combing out shedding undercoat. We're combing out the natural release of hairs. And if you leave them in there, they felt. Yeah. There's a name for that process. Uh, the dog losing and regenerating hair. Mm -hmm. for the, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Neither can I. But there's a name for that. And it is not shedding. No, it is a but, cycle. 
But if you don't clear it out, you don't have as healthy a skin, you don't have as healthy a coat, and your dog mats. And your the hair follicle is, is blocked. Yes. Kind of. Can become very blocked. Yeah. Yes. So you gotta take out the old to make room for the new. Just like our hair. That's why we shed. Yeah. Our eye eyelashes, our eyebrows, everything sheds. Mm -hmm. It's just how it works. So that's why I'm going back through him and making sure this slides through. And as you can see, I'm already getting out loose stuff. It's not pulling out here. And this is a fine tooth comb. This is an Utsumi mm -hmm. fine tooth comb. So the, the tines are much closer together than the comb we originally. And if you don't do this and you wash your dog, your dog is going to mat. But you don't just comb. You have to go through all the proper brushing first. Mm -hmm. Then the comb tells you we're good to go. And the comb also tells you you got all the mats out. Yep. And if you don't comb after you brush, people come in all the time, but I just brushed my dog. That doesn't matter. Did you comb it? Afterwards, And did yeah. you comb it right? Yeah. And did you comb it from one end of its body to the other? Because if you didn't, you don't know if it was done properly. It's impossible. Yeah. I can't know. I can brush a dog thoroughly, and I can't know until I take the comb through. If it's thorough. And I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing, and I know what I'm feeling, and I still can't tell. Yeah. So, that's why I always teach people. And I was thinking of merchandise that I would carry eventually on my channel. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tools. Should be. Yeah. It's going to be my favorite tools. That's what I'm going to carry. <laughs> well, and I think that's that's ideal because the people that are watching you, you know, they see you using these tools. They say, what is that? Where can I get it? Say, all of my tools are labeled, identified in the link below. Or just as merch. Yeah. On the channel. Well, unfortunately, you can't. You can't um, do that? Well, no. I would you love to. You can sell t-shirts and well, stuff. Well, yeah, because YouTube thinks t-shirts are important and life-changing. Oh. But not... Anything other we, than a hat or a coffee cup. How about if we have merch with our name on it? You still, there's only, um, I've researched this, yeah. trust me. There is only um, certain, as far as what shows up right under your videos, there's only certain companies that they will allow you to collaborate with. Um, under there now maybe sneaky. that'll change it's, you know it's not fair it's not and we want to be able to carry what you guys can use right but that's the whole idea of link below link mm. in the description below that's why we go to the trouble of going and finding those links to the products that we love and putting them there for you guys so that you can simply click to go investigate that product on your own or purchase it for yourself at least you know and it's work but like with Suzanne and I on our channel, Suzanne, you can make a standard format on I your YouTube. Got all that, yeah, all the links. and the, that stuff can just show up on every video. It does. If you ever change something, simply go and make the change, and it continues on. Yeah, I got all that. And that's you know you're helping people by doing that. Because this is a service to you guys. Yeah. And that's why we appreciate. You know, when you guys do support us, when you guys do subscribe, we sure. appreciate subscribe. We appreciate it so so much. We can help more people. The bigger we are together, guys, the more powerful our voices are as a unit, and the more people we can help all over the world. Don't forget that it's not just here in the states. We are connected okay. all over the world, it's and okay. we are supported together as it's one. It's okay. I'm not gonna tug it. Oh, that's the bad one, huh? It's okay. See, I thought I had this out with the brush, but it was only through checking with a wide tooth comb. I still missed it. It wasn't until I went back with the fine tooth comb that I found I missed a spot. That it actually snagged in there and said, hey. And this would have turned into a big mat by next week if I wouldn't have finished getting it out. Definitely. So that's... And when you, when you do your dog at home... And you say, but he doesn't like it when I brush there. 
I'm just going to leave that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to the groomer in a couple weeks. It'll be okay. I'm just going to leave that for the groomer. She can deal with it. Don't do that. Yeah. It'll become a problem and a day or two later. Every time you leave it, it gets ten times worse. Mm -hmm. So don't leave it. Do your job. Do your homework. Finish your job. And we'll give you an A+. Plus. <laughs> and so will your dog. <laughs> yes. Your dog will be He's in good happier. shape, huh? Yes, he is. Mom does a good job. This is a hard, hard job. Okay, we're going to go give him a break. Let him go potty because he likes to do that. He likes to leave his P-mail address <laughs> for all the girls. <laughs> he says I'm neutered, but my stuff is still available. <laughs> So I could leave my P-mail address. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Let's go, Maui. Ugh. Don't knock over the light on the way by. <laughs> you also did that last night. Did they? They did. Oh, I'm going to plug in this phone for a short period of time. Because I certainly don't want to lose charge today. I'm going to feed the poodles real quick. Brakes are good. It charges up our devices all over again. Really? Yeah. They're gonna love it here. Hey, come here. Let's turn that mic off a second, just to save, save life. Oh, I got it done. All right. I'm gonna go to them real quick. BRB, guys. I take all your vegetables and a little bit of brown rice.
rice and stuff, and I puree it, mm. and then I stir it over the meat, and it makes sure that they eat it. Oh yeah, so they get enough of everything. Be looked a little, a little um, ticked off when she came back. She was. Yep. She was like, "How dare you leave me over there?" Mm -hmm. I could see it. She hurt. She was like this, holding on to you when you came back, and she had this look in her eye like she changed. She her expressions are very obvious. Yes. Mm -hmm. When she doesn't like something, she really doesn't like something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Piece of cake. I've been eating so healthy since I've been here in Florida. Not. <laughs> Guys, tonight, it's our last day together. I go home tomorrow more tomorrow afternoon. Um <laughs> thanks, Maddie. Um Tonight after we do Charlie, which he's he's a big dog, he comes in at two, and we'll be grooming him till six. I think we'll have him till six about. After that, shortly after that, somehow Suzanne and I are gonna have to shut down some leftover pizza or something. And we're gonna sit down. She's gonna go live here on her channel again. And I'm gonna film our an interview of her and I together. And after I film that, that'll be live for you guys, too. We won't be answering questions or anything. Isn't that rude to talk to the mouthful? Until the interview is over. And I turn off my cameras. And that's stuff I'm going to throw into my videos that I've been filming here all weekend. And then we're going to have Q&A with you guys. Me and Suzanne, and that'll be live on her channel. And then we can talk about the events of the weekend, um, maybe uh, upcoming events, answer your specific questions, or just talk with you guys. So that'll be the last thing that we do together this weekend on, on this trip to Tampa. So I hope you guys can join us. And to give you an idea of what time... I know. This is good. To give you an idea of what time I'd say, guys, you could probably think it should be maybe somewhere around 6.30 or 7 tonight. So I'd like to get back to the hotel a little earlier than I did last night. So get packed, get a shower again, and get ready to roll out of town tomorrow. But I'll be back. Mark my words. My pretty. I'll be back. I named her and I today the dynamic duo. And I'm sticking with it. Because I think my filming abilities, her grooming abilities, and our knowledge together, and the way that we interact together, her and I, I think it is just, it feels so good. And it comes out very nicely to you guys. Which is who we're sharing with. So... I'm going to go wash my hands. I'll be right back. Yep, it's going to be great, Haley. <laughs> I'll be right back. We'll be ready to get back busy. Busy, busy, busy. Let me grab my. <coughs> <coughs> Charlie sh shared the cover of the YouTube video on their page today. Aww. They're excited. They, I bet they are excited. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good time. <clears throat>
and it's probably going to be really on Instagram. gonna get real right. oh jamie just gave you a super chat for 2.99 looks like she's not the only one there's more there oh wow thank you guys i can't see who all did it here we go jamie high five let's see who else we got who else we got here i can't find you i can't find you here i don't know why that is when when we're live on youtube why it's so hard. Now, if I was on desktop, I'd be able to go right up and see it. But well, I can't oh, see who else did it. I know. But I whoever you thing. are, high fives. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Believe me, it's appreciated. We are going to get him back on the table as soon as my coffee's finished. Okay. We're going to shave his pads and do his nails. And then we're going to start the time clock for two hours at that point and I'm only going to give myself the allotted time from the National Dog Groomers Association of two hours it's, it's and we'll see if we can finish him in the allotted time because that's one of the big challenges is getting a dog done in time yeah so that would be the amount of time that you're given if you are certifying through the National Dog Groomers Association with a long-legged terrier. And when we groom dogs, we give ourselves... So when I say I charge so much money for, for a groom on a dog like this, it's to cover my time. One hour for the bath and blow dry, two hours for the trim. You're blocking out three hours of my time. So... When I do a proper breed standard trim, a hand scissored trim, a fancy pattern, or a show groom, that's why I charge so much more because I'm blocking out a bigger period of time. Um, and wherever we're at in that period of time, when the... Who did that? Carrie J, thank you so much. High five. I named you guys the double mint... Oh, wait. Don't go away. Don't go away. Slide it down. I named you guys the the double mint gals. Double you pleasure, double your, your <laughs> double your pleasure, double your fun. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, we <like> Carrie. That. <laughs> Carrie J. We love Carrie J. Carrie J, we're doing the doodle trim today. I guarantee you. And you it. were the inspiration for changing it from a Carrie to a doodle trim. Oh. For you. That's awesome. It's gonna be a goodie, a goodie. Yes, it is. Oh, I was so tired last night when I went to bed. I usually wake up three or four times. I didn't wake up at all until about ten minutes before time to get up. I was beat. <laughs> I've never been so tired doing three dogs. <laughs> well, and we were not only working, but we were running our mouths the whole time. You know, that's extra work. She's getting ready to bring Maui back in, so let's go ahead and capture that moment. All right, I've had water mm -hmm. while my coffee was cooking. Good now I have you. coffee. Good for you. Yeah. All right. Here, Here we go. Dog where I need to go if I'm working on a big dog. That's perfect. I know. 
and it doesn't tangle up on anything, yeah. you can leave it on them in the run because they're not going to get hurt. No. Good boy. Oh, good boy, then. So this good. is what I was talking about. See how I make it into a handle? And I can walk my bigger dogs. Because I used to do bigger dogs when I did use the harness. And this is what I did when I had to get them off the, cha off the table. I hook it back to itself, make a handle, and there you go. Then I can put them back on the table instead of having to put the whole thing back on them. That's nice. I just simply unhook it, and there we go. We're ready to go. Very versatile. I love it. Yeah. Good boy, big guy. Good to see you again. All right. We're going to do the pads before we start the time clock. Okay. So I'm going to use a 40 blade on his pads. I'm going to be careful not to cut off the back of the foot there. Don't be a butthead. I knew something told me that he wasn't going to like this or the nails. I don't know what. It could be the um, fact that he's a terrier. He's a terrier? <laughs> so okay, he's you're a terrier? I'm going to turn it down to what? 30 since he's bumping his foot into a clever. Yeah. But you know, it makes sense. Terrier's feet are their tools. They go to ground. Terrier means go to ground. There you go. So it, it makes sense why their feet are very ultra sensitive. So while I'm not pushing this down and cutting this off this way, I'm pushing it up ah. and exposing the pad a little bit and cleaning it up. Because I need that hair to drop all the way to the ground for the pillow. That's right there. behind his, his pad. Yeah, and if you cut that off, it brings it up already. Mm, gives you this angle to your foot. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. I mean, it's not terrible in some respects, but when you have somebody knowledgeable looking at your work, that's the first thing their eyes going to see. Yeah. And if you're testing for certification, you do have somebody knowledgeable looking at your work. Exactly. Suzanne's using the Artera Spectra 4-in-1 clipper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another thing different on Wheaton's compared to some of the other terriers is you're not to show the toenails on these. The toenails must be completely covered with hair. Interesting, but that's the way it is. It says so. Mm -hmm. We're not rule breakers here. No. Not today. <laughs> You're right. Not today. We are playing. We're a little bit breakers, but not today. <laughs> sometimes their middle nails are shorter than their outer nails, and sometimes their outer nails are shorter than their middle nails. Depends on the way that their gait is and the way they run on their feet. So don't think you can just go around your dog's feet and take an even amount off every nail you cannot. That's a good point. You gotta look at every single nail. I've never thought about sharing that, but that is so <clears> true. <throat> We're mindful of it, but I never even thought to share that. They're all not the same on the same foot. It depends on how the dog moves, how they get walked, where they get walked. If they walk on sidewalks daily, it'll all depend on the structure of their movement. If they're more powerful behind and less so in the front, their rear nails are gonna be ground down. If they're heavy in the front and they've got weaker rears, 
their nails in the back are going to be longer and their front nails are going to be ground down. And sometimes their outer nails are ground down and their middle nails are not, depending on the shape of the foot. Like dogs with a hair foot, they tend to grind down their middle nails and not their outer nails because their front two toes are longer. So it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It is. You can already do these ideas. It's something that we don't even think about talking about, but other people are like, shoot, is that? No I wonder, you know, when I cut my doll's nails, I put it the same and then and I made the middle one bleed. Like this one, I only took off right here. See how much of the quick's exposed right there? Yeah. If I dremel this toenail, it would bleed. Sure. All I can dremel is this upper corner. Yes. But if I went over this, you can see how black it is there. That's the point. He would bleed if I touched a dremel to it lightly. Yep. So you only did the tip. Yeah. And I didn't cut it there. I barely touched it. And that was just Because he point. had it worn out. Yeah, so you gotta look. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, two twelve twenty one one twenty one two twenty one. We put our scissors down. Are we ready? Scissors down. <laughs> Are we ready for some fluke ball? All right. So what do I want to use? I really don't want to use chunkers. We want to use thinners. Chunkers. <laughs> you got to. You have to. We These gotta try something. Our magic. First, just try it. See what you think. All right, we're gonna. These are Jonathan David. Yes, the lightning. Shirt. So we're gonna compare Jonathan David with V. Hold three. on, I need that on camera. We're gonna compare Jonathan David and V. Three. We're gonna see which ones we like better. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm excited. Right. So I love my Jonathan I, David. Where do I want to begin? Well, you tell me, boss. <clears throat> I'm going to take off the harness, see if he'll behave himself. And I'm going to comb over these areas where the harness sat real quick. Actually, I shouldn't be starting my time yet. Hold on, we're not starting your time yet. Start over. Because <laughs> I didn't brush in here. And I didn't comb it because the harness was on him. And we totally needed that harness for his blow dry and his nails. <laughs> Because he would be all over the place. And he's typically very good for the trim and scissor. So I really don't need him restrained, I don't think, unless he just decides that Amy is his girlfriend and he's just got to be with her. Yeah, I'm going to try not to be distracting to him for his sake. It's frustrating to him, too, when he's distracted. Well, if I need you to stand on the other side, you're just going to have to go. <laughs> no, that's fine. Just let me know. I'm totally game. This is why I didn't want to do this on the clock, because I knew there would be something up under here. There's always something under the armpits. Don't you go anywhere. That's Maybe. a hiding place for Max. Yes, <laughs> and the harness was covering it up. Yeah. Some of these I might cut out from under here. We really don't need that hair. You wouldn't see it. And it would be, be nicer on him. What you guys saying over there? I can't see you. <laughs> Amy can't either, so I I'm can't. Filming. <laughs> Feel better soon. Somebody must not be feeling well in our chat. Aww. I hope that whoever it is is feeling better soon. All right, let's check this. So, just like my other grooms, I'm going to set my outline first. That way, my eye can see what I'm doing. My my. The balance of things. If I don't have the outline, it's like when you're drawing. If you're drawing a picture, you always draw the outline of the picture and then you go back and fill it in. If you're drawing a face, you draw the outline of the face, then you go back and do the eyes and the nose, you know? You, you never start without an outline. So the first thing you do when you start grooming a dog like him is you're setting your outline of the shape of the dog. Mm -hmm. So I'll do my clipper work first. And then for me personally, I start with the top line, mm -hmm. the underline, the front, the back. Mm -hmm. And then I start to fill it all in. Makes sense. All right. 
225. 225, scissors down. 225. 225. Y'all remember that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the clipper work first. I'm going to do the inside of his ears with a 10 blade. Charm becomes a two, right? Yes. This is all in a ten Mm-hmm. Just on the inside. Stay. Now I'm gonna do a seven on the outside. Only from the break of the ear down. The break of the ear is, say when his ears are perked up and coming forward, we need some of this dome to the top of his head. We want this dome to come down into where this ear breaks. So you can see where that line is, like right from here forward. We're gonna take the seven blade from there down. And this haircut does call for a seven on the ears. You wanna use the seven F. Not a skip tooth. Oh, I forgot about his ear missing. You leave a little hair there to shape it. A little, but I yeah. took a little too much. He's missing the tip of his ear. He got in a dog fight. Difference between a 7F, I get asked this a lot, a 7F and a 7. I, I can I tell you what I tell my people, but I wonder if it's <clears> different <throat> if I'm misled. I show them pictures, so I've pulled them up on YouTube and showed them two different phones with them, um, so they can see when I'm talking about it. So I think when we do the video, we should show pictures of the two blades side by side. Okay. Say use this one, not this one. Well, the skip tooth I never use, but but some people get confused. They hear a seven blade. A seven is a skip tooth. It can a be. A 7F is a 7F. But if you're going with a, like, there's a 7FC, which means finish cut. There's a 7F, which means 7 finish blade. Right. So, like, Andis uses FC. Yeah. Finish cut. It's their naming. But it, any F is going to be full teeth. This is a 7F. Yeah. Full teeth. And these 5-in-1, 4-in-1 blades don't make a skip to. No. No. But... You have to know when I'm saying this that you never use a regular seven. Always use a seven F, seven FC. A regular seven is a skip tooth. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So you got to be careful when you're saying it. Yeah. Because people will buy it. Well, I think yes. And what people often confuse is what, when I get the emails is what is you said to get a seven F blade. This is a seven FC. Same thing. But a seven is not. A 7 is not, but a 7FC is finished cut. A 7F yes. is finished. They are the same thing. Right. And why don't they just well, stop naming them? Or I shouldn't stop. No, I know, but it's frustrating. I'm wondering, do, am I missing something? But no, yeah, the 7 skip tooth, usually it's labeled skip tooth. And when you're doing ears, go from the center of the ear down, center of the ear out, center of the ear out, center of the ear out. Always. Center down, center out, center out. That way you're not going to nick the ear. Or hopefully you won't nick the ear. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're not going to. You could. It's very easy to nick an ear. Yes, it is. So now I'm going to edge out his ears. Just scissoring it as close to the skin as I can get. Try to leave some fill for his boo-boo. That was a mess of healing up from that. I bet. 
And that's why you never give two dogs a toy or a bone unattended or in the same room. Like my poodles can have it in the same room, but we never leave them unattended. But we can't leave a bone with the Kerry Blue Terrier in the poodles. Yeah. That would be deadly. That'd be like leaving a bone with my bulldog, my doodle. Yeah. Two different, very different breeds with and different even, intentions. Even though Hannah is old, the girl that bit him is old too. <laughs> She's the same age as Hannah. All right, so we've done the ears. I'm going to do his throat and stuff. Let me come around this way. So I'm going to use thinning shears on all of this. It's already pretty short. So the breed standard says thinning, no blade work, only in the throat area. It's close, close, mm -hmm. but no blade is allowed to be used. Right. So V3 ones, <sighs> by far. They're probably sharper. They are. I haven't had mine sharpened in about eight months. They need it. I know. They still work great on the And with oh, this much cutting, I do need sharp. He has a soft coat, too. They need to be very sharp for a soft coat. So basically, where I angle my ear up is I want, or my beard, I'm kind of shooting for here. Mm -hmm. To the front of the ear. So that's where I'm kind of setting this line. I mean, all this goes in tight, mm -hmm. but I still want this line. You know, it's not from the eye to the lip like it would yeah. be a carry. So it's a fuller beard. It's from like the corner of the eye to the front corner of the ear. Yeah, if you're standing way away from the dog, you kind of kind of see this. Yeah, this angle here. And underneath that can be a little tighter. No, it's got to be kind of full. It's going to be fuller under here. Oh no, that's that going to be tighter. That is going to be tighter. Just where I visually see that beard. So that's where I'm setting this first line. Mm -hmm. So if I am doing this with clippers, I just simply use like a four down in here and then I skim off with a seven where I want it tighter. Because if I'm doing an everyday groom, I will use clippers. Oh yeah. And not on a show coat, obviously. Show and coat I don't understand why we're using thinning shears here anyway because it's the same effect. Yeah. I'm it just... is the same effect as a clipper. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm doing it like they tell me to do it. <laughs> following the rules, following the rules. Yes, we're following the rules. <laughs> okay, so where the eyebrow drops off here is basically where you're going to start thinning backwards. And you're not going to angle down in, and you're not going to make it flat. You want it raising up, because that's going to give height to his neck hair, and you'll lose your dome. And you've got to have a bit of a dome here. So you want to angle from this brow upwards. Mm -hmm. And you want the head a brick shape. You don't want hair jutting out. You can lie down. You don't want hair jutting out off the side anywhere. You don't want the beard thicker than the head. You want it all in balance like a brick.
<laughs> Every time. Okay, so this is something that I teach all the time, and it, it's with Doxis Color, it's with Doodles, it's with Poodles, it's with Cockapoos, Cavapoos, Multipoos. A lot of dogs that are this color are dogs that get breezy butt. And breezy butt's like when they sit down after they've been clipped with a tin blade oh, or yeah. they turn and look. Mm -hmm. It's also dogs that excessively shake their head if you pluck their ears or trim the wrong place under their ear. Dogs who twitch their ears is an immediate indicator that they're going to do all of those things. Ooh, that is an interesting fact. So when you get close to the ear, they Did start you? twitching. Yeah. Dogs who twitch their ears are ultra sensitive everywhere. So you can, you know, figure in those private areas, even sometimes pads of feet, it's, it could be really sensitive. Exactly. To so that's your clear indicator right there. That's, that's me. And you'll notice it. Once you know it, you'll start seeing it with your doodles and you're like, I'm not plucking those ears. Yeah. Because that's going to be a head shaker. Yeah. The second you see ear twitching, you're going to have head shaking. And we need to give ourselves like an extra 10 minutes for talking. I know. <laughs> it's tough. It is. Because if you're not filming, you're, you are um, focused and just going. Yeah. Okay, so I'm angling this dome. So if you look at the picture real quick, you can see this dome. And this is what we're trying to create, is this dome over the ears. Angles up and rounds out over the top and angles back down. Did you get a good shot? I did. I also got a good shot. Yeah. All right. <laughs> He's dirty, <laughs> isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So now he doesn't have a lot of coat, but he does. <clears throat> working on the top line? I think I want to do the top line, then I'm going to do the shoulders, and then I'll do the angulation. Okay. He sees himself in the in the window. Me, a beauty. And he's like, ooh, terrier. He's like, there's a terrier <laughs> over there, and I see it. It's a fine specimen in that window. Wait. So... I'm going to want to keep quite a bit of neck here, and I'm going to want to bring down his top line. And I'm going to want to bring it nice and flat. And I'm going to use thang shears going with the lay of the coat so I keep his coat texture correct. So I'm starting, we got his shoulder blades here. You got a little bit of a dip behind the shoulder blades. I'm going to start behind the dip. Because if you start right behind the shoulder blades, you catch the dip. And then you have a back that sinks down and raises back up. Most dogs have a dip behind the shoulder blades. So that's where I always start my top line, and then I can balance everything out after that. I want his neck to look quite long, so I'm going to go pretty tight in here. V3 is the first brand of thinning shears and chunkers that I've ever wanted to scissor a dog with. Wow. Usually I will cheat and go back over it with thinning shears yeah. because I don't like to just use I, I don't get the effect. This is the first brand. Wow, it sounds like they're going to have to step up their game so other people oh, can get man. their shears because they... they uh, I can't live without them. No, you just got them, lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I've had, I've had them for a few months now. Oh, yeah? I just had some replaced because the sharpener ruined them. Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, she didn't ruin them. She just didn't do them. It's like she went and took them out to her van and brought them back in without touching them. All right. When we get to the tail, just like the copper tail, just like all terrier tails, eh, we're leaving a V in front of the tail. So I'm coming down this way with the thinning shears and down this way, and I'm not touching right in here because I need this fill of hair later to make this swoop up and catch his tail. We don't want too much, we don't want too little, but if you cut it out, the tail drops off the back mm -hmm. and then your tail's kind of separated from your body. We want it like a nice continual flow. So I'm gonna get back 
over here. We're angling it to shape the V. We're not coming down in here because we need a nice wide rear, just like with the poodle yesterday. Yes. So we're coming flat off. You guys have to watch her video to get these details because I'm blocking you. Sorry, guys. If we had just one more fan film crew, it'd be yeah, perfect. They would. Be perfect. Okay, come back under here. Scant. You're looking at the top line on your phone? I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm using you guys for a mirror. <laughs> People are like, she's always looking at us real hard. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I have to explain to them, I'm not looking at you hard. Looking My at expression you. is hard because I'm focused. Yeah. But I'm, I'm staring at the dog. She's not you. Looking at the profile. <laughs> I want to see his outline. <laughs> you have to be a little harder with a terrier. You can't pussyfoot around with them. And they expect it. That's what they need. And they respect it. They do respect it. But it is what they need. You're like, no nonsense, mister. All right. Oh, shoot. That's okay. I can work on this. Well, you got to see it. I, I know. I keep trying to follow, and he follows me. Stay. Well, she got out her dad voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did use to have Rottweilers. <laughs> I had to use my dad voice for the Rottweilers. <laughs> Stay. You're making me miss my hodge buddy. That's what he talks to our dogs. No. <laughs> okay. So I want a wide rear. And I would do this same thing with a carry. Ah. Um, you want width. So I want it to angle out, drop down, come straight down in here, but I need a fairly low set hawk, mm -hmm. so, and I need angulation, but we still need to keep all the fluid. Mm -hmm. So. You're supposed to have a bit of a bouncy coat, right? Yes, the coat has to shift when it moves. Yes. And it has to flow, it, and he's already quite short. So, you know, to have that movement to his coat, it we got to be very like, strategic about what we remove, right? Yeah, so I want him to have a shelf. I want him to come in. So what I'm going to do is come straight down the middle. And you're not supposed to show skin anywhere on a Wheaton. Unlike you, a Carrie Blue. Yeah, a Carrie Blue, you need them shaved bald back mm -hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And I use a 7 on the front end of a carry blue. I use a 40 on the ears. But not on a Wheaton. No, Wheatons aren't supposed to be exposed skin. Where are you going? Here, look, there's an end. There we go. Stay. So I'm coming straight down the middle. I don't go as low. As a carry, or we did. Who did we do? Oh, uh, the bedlington. The bedlington. So they have a well let down hawk, but you need the foot fill of hair for the flow. So you got to balance out the two things. Yeah. And you notice with the bedlington, I went way on in. And him, yeah, I don't want to see skin. The bedlington had a a, a more petite shape to it though so the structure of the bedington is different than this terry and the most important thing about this terrier is the coat yeah so to get the shape right i want this really close but i don't want to expose skin Do you mind? Are we coming over there? I'm still working on the back end. I want to just see how it's looking. She's looking at you guys. I'm looking at his booty. <laughs> I 
I'm weird like that. Never mind. <laughs> I'll delete that. <laughs> Thank you. Just kidding. <laughs> ah. He's like, I was neutered not too long ago, and like, this mm -hmm. is bothering me. Yeah. But, you know, Susanna's trying to place his feet close to the edge of the table so that he makes the decision to not step a foot off the table. Exactly. I had to remind him there's an edge mm -hmm. so he would stop backing up. And he will. And so he would pull himself forward in his entire body so I can get a proper cut. Because when a dog is backing up, humping up their back, and out of proportion like this, see how his, he looks different? You can't get a proper cut because you're not seeing things the way they're supposed to be. He's not standing right. Exactly. He won't be standing right and it's going to mess up your hair, dude. i mess it up. And he's leaning like your doodle does. <laughs> Maybe my doodle's got some hair or wheat and terrier in them. Maybe. Okay, so just like I did ammo, if you look at him from over there right now, <coughs> you can see he Sorry, did, buddy. You can see he doesn't have that sharp of an angle on his rear. I want to keep the sharp angle on his rear without cutting out the width of hair. So I'm going to do just like I did with ammo. I'm going to take my scissors at this angle, or my thinning shears, and I'm going to just come in here judiciously. So that doesn't take the width. I still forgot to look that word up. <laughs> Why are you pawing at your eyes? Stop that. This is something that I can't wait to go home. This this tip right here with those angles coming forward towards the back of the leg, the front of the leg. That is going to make a big difference. Just gonna give him a minute to think about things. I'm gonna take one foot, remind him there's an edge, take the other foot, take both feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a good idea. So he needs to be reminded right now. Right there. Take no dummy. Okay, so I think that hawk still needs to come down more. So I'm gonna go right in here. Take out too much. Be careful. Okay, so we're starting to get a lot more bend. Hold on, let me get him leaning up. There we go. Yeah. So that that just that little bit coming this way. It's not straight in. It's this way, like yep. angling away. That just gives you this sharpness that we need there to let down that hawk. Mm -hmm. I said hawk with a hawk. <laughs> Are you German? I guess so. <laughs> so we were having a debate on here the other day on the proper pronunciation of the beaver terrier. Oh, I know. It's spelled beaver. Or B I E W W E R B B, -E -R. B, -B word, but w, if it's German, W's are B's. Correct. So there you go. But there's an American pronunciation on Google. Translate. How does it? Beaver. No. No beaver. It, it's it's awkward. We're getting off track. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, guys, we're getting off track here. We got a wig and terrier. It's only going to hold it together for about another hour. Then he's going to lose his mind. Okay, so now we can see we don't have that much of an angle. I've already got the back of the leg cut in. We're going to do it again on this side. So you can see there's not much of a sweep. I'm angling my scissors this way. Not straight out. Mm -hmm. This way. I'm just going to come in. Coming all the way down to the highest point, or to the bend of, of the swoop, right? Kind of, yeah. I want to keep a little more flow up here than I did on the others. Like ammo and the mm -hmm. Bedlington. 
It just gives it a three-dimensional look. Yeah. So when you move around the dog, it just pops from all angles. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. And it does. Can you stand forward? It's not quite where I want it yet. And that's why I use the phone or I use a mirror so I can see from a distance. Because you can't see when you're right up on top of a dog. You gotta look it from a distance to see if you get it right. Or you need somebody to walk the dog for you. Mm -hmm. Or you gotta walk, follow the dog around on the floor. <laughs> That's my honey. Don't okay, my honey. well, we'll move to somewhere else. He's over that for now. <laughs> <laughs> now what are we going to do? I'm going to do a shoulders in the front of him. Okay, let me... Are you going to do that shoulder first? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do the front of him first. Okay. Wherever he ends up standing. <sighs> I can't keep following him. It's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Setting in the, the front? Yep. I would like to go down with my thinning shears, but it's uncomfortable. Let me use a straight. Yeah. And he's supposed to have a straight front, correct? Right? Yeah, it's supposed to drop straight off him. And they're a little wider than a carry blue. They're not in as tight. Mm -hmm. So the last thing you want to do is make a Wheaton look like a Kerry or a Kerry like a Wheaton. They're two different breeds. Yeah. Very different profile on each one. <clears throat> You're crazy. You're a crazy boy. It's a good thing we love you. So <laughs> like, don't do that, lady. I might bite you. You never know with a terrier. They they sometimes bite for play. Oh yeah, Hannah <laughs> does. Yeah. You get her going and she's yeah. got a hard bite. <laughs> you don't wanna you don't wanna test that out. Nope. Okay. So if you come in here in the front and look at him. Come on in, guys. See, see how thick this is here so it makes him look like dropped way down. Yes. His legs are kind of short. Yes, it makes him look shorter. We're going to lift up these legs and we're going to cut some out in between. Still leave the depth of chest. Don't lean. Oh, oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, buddy. Got See, I've left his chest down, but I made his legs longer. Yes. And I'm also getting rid of the areas of map. Yeah. Nobody will know. It'll be, it's for the best. So these behaviors where he's leaning all his weight and stuff into me, this is what makes it hard for me to groom these dogs yeah. with my arm. Why I can't do it consistently. Because that's when it'll take its toll on me. Yeah. As an individual. Yipper. So basically I want this to drop straight on down. You can see it's very straight right now. I'll take this off the toes. So it continues on straight later. I kind of do my feet last. I know a lot of people do them first. I do them last. All right, so you can see he's very thick, wide in the side of his neck. All that hair, that's gotta go.
and drop them down. So I can get the right angles here. So I'm going to comb the hair down to do this. Get this ear out of the way. to get this bulk out from here so as the ear lies in tight but not take too much of the neck here so just like the poodle i want to get in your way here just for a second to set them up okay so i want to create that shoulder line and it's too high right now and we're going to want to create the point of shoulder to point of rump it's kind of close but See how his shoulder, because of where I trimmed it, looks... It, it does look high. It looks yeah. real high yeah. because of the way the light shines on it. Mm -hmm. You got to think about those things. You don't want to make your dog look odd. So his shoulder, his point of shoulder is here. It's right about here. Now, you don't necessarily want to follow the dog's natural lines unless they're a good quality dog. <laughs> But you want to know what a good quality dog should be if it matters to you. Yeah. Well, it will matter when you're applying the trim. Yeah. And knowing the bone structure and how to follow it for different trims is going to balance out your trims. So how do you know? How would you as an everyday person know when you go to either the American Kennel Club's website or say if you've got a soft coat of Wheat and Terrier, go to the Soft Coat of Wheat and Terrier Club of America. Mm -hmm. They'll have the breed standard there and you read the breed standard and it'll tell you, like with a Bichon, it should be 10 parts long or to 9 parts high or a Poodle should be completely square. They're or, as long as they are high. You know, or their neck should be of moderate length or long or, you know, just different things that you can incorporate into the breed. If you're a groomer, you're like, well, does that really matter to me? Yes, yes. it does. If you want your trims to look balanced. And if you want your customer to come pick up your dog and say, wow, my dog looks amazing. Yeah, when all you did was a slight little tweak. It wasn't much different than what anybody else does, but that little tweak that follows the confirmation is a big deal. So for the most part, do you wonder why I'm going, instead of scissoring like normal, why I'm going with the lay of the coat? Yeah, it would look choppy. You don't want to chop into it. You have to go with the lay of the coat. Not necessarily, because under here I did against the grain. But and that's, he doesn't have long hair there. Right. I'm trying to keep the coarse, this wheat in color intact. Oh, uh, yeah. Instead of having too much of the lightness. Light color. Yeah. So I'm trying to, when I'm going with the grain, I'm trying to keep that to some degree. Mm hmm And trying to keep a natural flow. One thing, when you set the top line, I think I want to take a little more off up here. But you can see how much of that wheat in color I kept intact up here by going with the grain. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's got that darker shading in there. Yeah. All right, you. Are you tired? Well, the part I was going to show, he's like, no, I'm going to He's yeah. like, sorry. Sorry. Maui. <laughs> Maui. Maui. Good thing Don't you're you so know cute. I'm on a time clock? Come on, let's go, let's go. No, you're not leaving. He's like, I'm out of here. Where He's are we like, going? Cool, let's go. All right, let's do the other side of the neck. How about that? Good idea. And I'll then shut this up on this top line. 
whenever you're ready now. I want to flatten this out, make his neck a little bit longer. You want a nice flat top line. See, just by getting this top line on and the angle set in and that front off, how he's starting to take that wheat in shape, that stylish terrier look. That's what we want. Yeah, we want a stylish dude. All right, so we need to get this shoulder done. Change places if you want or if you want to stay there or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I want. Yeah, because I never know where the dog's going. There. Look at all the hair. Sorry, guys. There. So nice. Ah, we're not laying down. You're working. If I gotta stand up, you gotta stand up. Ah. So, let's see how these shoulder lines are looking. So now our lighting, if you notice, you're starting to see a line going down. Yeah, the you can see it. To where your point of shoulder and point of rump is starting to look evident. Yeah. Where you can see it from a distance. Bring this in. And if you look at pictures of Wheaton's, they like taper out and then down. Mm -hmm. So you really study those pictures that you see. And he's never had, he's always had this little funky spot in his, his neck hair. I've almost always kind of built this up, especially if I'm doing a picture of him. I have to kind of tease him up here because he's always had this little dip here in his, his hair. His hair is there. Just but it lays dips. differently? Is yeah. that what it is? It does. So while their fronts are supposed to go straight down, I still kind of set them up underneath them just a bit because it helps show those angles. So I don't take much there, just enough. To where I still have a straight line, but you can see the point of shoulder. You can see it come and go. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm a pet groomer, that's why when my clients' pets decide to go to a dog shop, <laughs> they win. Because bone structure and movement are super important to me. And I highlight like, the quality of my clients' dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I, I show off their good quality, mm -hmm, their attributes. Yeah. And if a groomer doesn't, or a pet owner doesn't do that, then when the dogs are standing side by side, the judge is going to look at this dog and he's going to say, wow, that dog's got some really nice angles. I can see his point of shoulder and point of rump. And I can see he's got nice angulation. The grooming you know, points out those awesome attributes. Exactly. If it's done right, the they grooming can make points it like out. a dog. Yeah. And we've got, gosh, an hour and a half left. It was it two twenty five or twelve twenty five? It was yeah. twelve twenty five when we started. We got a lot of time. We can. Yeah, but Charlie's to. coming at two. If we can get him done earlier, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, we spent extra time dematting, didn't we? Yes. Okay, so we're going to get him done in record time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do the tail now. Right, I'm in their way. I'm going to do the tail now. <clears throat> the back side of the tail goes very short. What? <laughs> The back side of the tail goes very short, but not so you can see skin. Want a nice terrier tail, carrot shape. And he's gonna back on up. He is back up to the to the bar. <laughs> I'm back up to the bar sometimes. 
I mean, I belly up. <laughs> I belly up to the bar. Girl. Girl. <laughs> you are too much. That's been a long few days. <laughs> the crazy's coming out. Okay. When I'm doing these tails, I do the backside short. I make sure I don't cut into this, but I pull this off to the back. And now I'm going to create this shelf this way uh -uh. and come up this way. Uh -uh. Excuse all my ants. They're editable. <laughs> Good. Not edible. Editable. Editable. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <laughs> you guys will catch all these details on Amy's video. <laughs> So I want it flat, I want it squared off when they look at him from behind. And I want this tail to just kind of flow into that. So I actually pay a lot of attention here. To the tail. And I yeah. draw this hair out and back without messing up this hair. Mm -hmm. So I can angle this up in. Because I want the tail to just look like it's completely naturally born this way. Yeah, of course. And it was. It came out that way. <laughs> Alright, so now this hump that we've left here, of course you can't leave that, right? No, but you left it for a reason. Alright, so now I want it to look natural. And I don't want to cut into it too much, so I'm going to hold my tail right about here and bring it down. So if his tail is down, it's not going to look unnatural. I'm going to put my tail back up. And I'm going to bring all this up and out. And just kind of flow it up. And I don't want it to mess up my top line. So you can see how he's got too much there. I don't want it to mess up my top line, and I don't want the top line to mess up my tail. <laughs> yeah, so it's tough. I spend a lot of time on my tails, on my Curie Blues, and on my any of my long-legged hand scissor terriers, which basically be a Curie Blue or a Wheaton. Mm -hmm. But the tail's really important to me. They thought you had a little hair. <laughs> froze. <laughs> He's like, okay. <laughs> Silly Maui. So it's starting to look pretty good now. Yeah. And you don't want it too pointy. I see people make it too pointy. Yeah. And it looks awful. So I like a nice little kind of blunt, carrot top blunt look. Yeah. It's and not I shake it. it pointy. I wag it. I want to make sure no hair is coming out of he sees himself again. Good boy. Look at that stance. Oh, God, he's beautiful. Let me work on that neck while I can see that. Yes. Very nice. Okay, so you, if you come over the top of him, I'm angling in here. So I'm blending these shoulders into the neck and still keeping the width. Mm-hmm. I see it. You bet. So I'm coming this way. Yeah. Careful when he's rolling his skin so that we, we have this taper out that you see in these pictures. Yes. See, tapered from the neck to the shoulder and then straight down the leg. Think about those lines, but then look how tight it is here. Yeah. So you got to think tight, full. And there's it's a transition tricky. in it's there. It's very tricky. Yes. To show you yes. guys. That is. So you can see, stay, stay. You can see where he's tied up in the shoulder. Here, you point, so, because I got to hold him. So he's tight in the shoulder and it angles down and then goes straight. But then you look at the head and neck here, it's tight. a super tight trim. So this is real tight, short. Mm -hmm. And the transition to that, you got to be careful of that you don't make it look pinchy when yeah. you're looking at him from the front. Yeah. It's, and it, not too bulky. 
It's it's a complicated yeah. term. Yeah. And a lot of people, it takes a lot of time to get it right. And it also, it's hard to find a dog with enough hair to get it right. True. So when he was being shown, he had a lot more hair than this. Had a lot more flow. He had a little bit more hair here. And just his coat really moved with him. He's shorter now. But even now, to get a dog with it, this much hair is tricky for us pet groomers. We don't get to practice on it. It's yeah. not that we don't want to do it. We don't get to practice on it. We don't get good quality dogs in all the time, and we don't get them in often enough. And if we do, then they don't have enough hair. Right. So I'm going to come tighter still. On both sides. Say. You guys remember how to play Twister? I'm playing it. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm just going with it's it. It's funny. You guys are going to see the difference between a terrier brain and a doodle. Not, a, a doodle. Sh a doodle brain. They're, that's coming in next. Well. Yeah. There's a difference in their thought patterns. Yeah. Not, I'm not saying one's more intelligent. I'm saying the compliancy that you're going to get easily just by touching a dog on the dog we're going to groom next is going to differ from this dog. But you have to understand that dogs have many, many, many generations of personality traits. Mm -hmm. that have been bred into each breed so or each yes. type of dog so does that mean because terriers are different than poodles does that mean that the terrier is not a good dog oh no absolutely way. not they they have different traits yes and they respond differently. Mm -hmm. He's responding great to a firmness. I'm not going to do it right now. So I don't want to make him think, oh. He wants a nap. But he responds differently than the dog we're going to have next. When we want to reel them back in. The dog we have next, because of the his breeding, his breed is going to respond differently. Okay, I'm going to do a round of speed, I think. Now I'm going to set his tuck up. Stand. Thank you. That's what I was <laughs> That's the one. They're quick reminder. That's what he needed. And he's like, oh, I got you. I'm there. He's very obedient. He's it's a great just, dog. It's how you how you uh, communicate with, a, say, a terrier versus a, a different type of breed that's more of a... Compliant. Yeah. And it's a whole different... It, it is. He's uh, compliant. He is compliant. It's interesting. Yeah. All right, so the tuck up on these guys, we set towards the middle of the dog. We angle for the last rib, and we don't want him to scrunch his body up as we're doing it. So I'm taking from his stifle, and I'm pretending there's hair here, and I'm going straight for the last rib anyway. And marking where the highest point of the tuck up is? Mm-hmm. Whether I have hair to fill or not, that's still where I'm going to shoot for Day. So when he scrunches, it sets his lines off, so I have to keep him square. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to take a straight line down towards the elbow without him backing up. Dude, that's a dad voice. We, <laughs> I want to go for his elbow. Do we want that hair to be no longer than the elbow as well? Right. Is that correct? You don't want to go below the elbow. Okay. Or he'll look dumpy. Another trick on a Wheaton, especially if they're going to be shown, you don't want the side coat to mess up the top line. So you take the other side of the dog and you flip it like this to see if this is going to raise up and mess up this top line, which it yes. does. So, so especially when he, I'm sorry, when he moves... That's going to bounce just like that. 
So what I'm going to do is take my wide tooth comb. I'm going to bring this side coat up just a hair. And I'm going to cut this off. So if the wind blows as he's moving around, that's not going to mess him up. There we go. That's better. But there's still a piece here. And if you're, say if you're wanting to get certified, if you take your dog into the certification and or grooming competition, any knowledgeable judge is going to do just this. And they're gonna check your dog and they're gonna look at it. And they're gonna have another one standing off to the side and looking and saying, mm -hmm. or. <laughs> yeah. They will, because it's right there in the National Dog Groomers Association guidelines. It tells you ahead of time they're going to do that. Yeah. So this is where he's got his little cowlick thing. Yeah, I see that. He's always had this, so when he was shown, we would actually pull this up. <laughs> yeah. Because his hair naturally breaks there. Oh, and that's what's causing the dip. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to take this side. Ugh. Stop. So when I do this, see how this hair floats up? So if the wind's blowing, this is gonna float up and it's gonna mess up his top line. Top line's very important. Yeah. So take my wide tooth comb, pick it up, and thin off right. So if the wind blows his hair up. Stop it. So, because of this natural break, I'm gonna take him in tight right there, right behind it. Right here. I'm gonna get rid of this. And just start sloping it down from there. It's looking good. Look over there in the. Oh yes. It's looking good. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so we're gonna set the tuck up on this side. You might want to save battery since you already got That's battery. That's what I was just thinking. So you guys, if you take your tuck up too far back, if you don't take it to the last rib, your dog's tuck up's gonna be back here. And look how your dog's shape's gonna change. It makes him look really long and he's not and balanced. And awkward and lean and yeah. poor quality. Your tuck up is probably your biggest thing that you really need to pay attention to when you're a groomer. It brings your eye right in the center of the dog. Mm -hmm which balances out his front to his back half. That's probably the biggest mistake I see groomers make is tuck up and snowshoes. They take off too much in here, mm. which makes the leg dip in, and then you've got these feet sticking out. So you got this and that, and then your whole groom is ruined. If you can learn to keep almost every dog angling up towards the last rib, almost every dog never dropping below the elbow. Your neck, you should look at your neck. Your neck should fall right about where the back of the front leg is on almost everything. That's a good tip. Mm-hmm. Your eye just draws yeah. in balance. Sure. You know? And once you get those guides set, you can hand scissor anything. Anything. Once you work on your scissor skills. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but at least you know where you know what it. you're scissoring. You gotta yeah. know where to put the lines. Yeah. 
You do. And if you don't know, then you're unsure of yourself, and then you're like, I just don't know. I'm just going to clipper it. <laughs> Janelle says, great tip. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome, Janelle. Again, lots of good tips this weekend, aren't we, guys? All right. So I'm going to work on his feet. Okay. So I'm going to get that on camera. I can do a couple of them if you want to let it charge a minute. It's not charging. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just not using battery. I see. I think we're doing pretty good on battery light right now. So I'm going to use scissors. Jesus. Okay. Got you. Got you. I'm not going to pick up his feet. I'm going to comb everything where I want it. I'm going to put you on the harness for this because I don't need all that hair accessible. Just so I don't have to worry about it. You're done this way. I think so. Okay. It depends well, on which direction he hands goes. Up in. Yeah. I tend to follow my dogs around. When yeah. you're filming, that's a pain. It is. But it is a real big pain. <laughs> I I don't try to make my dogs stand still. I just go to wherever they end up. So I'm coming this up and out of the way. I don't want any of that caught up in what I'm doing. I'm working on feet. So the standard says you don't want to see toenails. So I want to get as close in as I can without seeing toenails. Because the entire foot is supposed to be covered with hair. So I'm going to lift this up. Because I want these feet in tight even though we're not showing toenails. Just so it can be well set up under the dog. And drop that back down. And keeping a lot of hair on these legs is part of what gives you the flow of the dog. We don't want any elbows jutting out, so I gotta get rid of that in a few minutes. Yep, but we're not addressing that right now. We're doing feet, right? Right. Stay focused. That's what we got. That's what where we where we make our mistakes sometimes is we get distracted by other things we want to fix. Ew, squirrel. Yeah. Butterfly. We, we need to focus on finishing the first task. <laughs> and we do this all the time. I, I jump all over the place. I know. I do too. I do too. You have to talk to yourself almost like get back to what you were doing. So I don't <laughs> want this foot sticking out further anywhere. I can't. Oh, see, she broke her own rule. Just <laughs> broke the rule. <coughs> I never had the first sip of my coffee. Ooh, coffee. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, shit. The lid came off. Oh, that's okay. This I gotta go take stuff these palm mats and stick them in the sink real quick before they stain. Do you want to rinse the comb out? They don't rinse off, right? Mm, not really. I spilt my coffee all over my pants. So we gotta stop our Keep clock. Keep an eye on the dog. <laughs> Thank you. I got oh, coffee, I got coffee on my hands. I am not touching him. You smell that, don't you? I know. Okay. See what I get for getting distracted? Like, well, I'm not, we are always in a hurry. Oh, I know what I could do. Stain a towel. Oh, yeah. We can bleach that towel. No problem. Oh, wow. These legs are looking so nice. So nice, Maui. My lid wasn't on good. I'm dumb. You're not dumb. I'm dumb. You're in a hurry. Stay, Mal. If anybody's going to kick a shear off the table, it's going to be a carrier. <laughs> Maybe. Unintentionally, but you know, say we move a lot. Your palm mats will stain if you're not careful. Yes, I've noticed that. I have noticed that. 
Don't want to stain your palm mats. Especially I have a, a light a light lime color and a pink. And boy, do they stain. Yeah, quick stop or anything like that. That's what stained it. I had quick stop on my finger and I touched it. It's like you got to turn it on instantly. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, we want you to need your tools back up here. We do. Hold on. I'll be back. Wait. Stay now. Grab it. Paper towel. It's okay, buddy. Yes. You are a fantastic guy. We're not going to have a break between our dogs. No. But we need a little bit of a charging break. We can video him getting back with my phone, my other phone. I can send you that video. Yeah. You can air drop it to me and I can have it. Yeah. Yep. Show me how to do that. This it's easy. But it's, yes, that'll work out. Ugh. I know. Let, let's just let's take this to the Now we gotta release this on. No. Okay. Technical difficulties. You're watching him out of the corner of your eye? Yep. I never take my eye off the dollar. All right, I don't need any of this other stuff. My scissors are over here. You want to just grab some paper towels, or you could just okay. lay your oh, yeah. to lay your scissors. I don't scissors need any of okay. those. Is, it, is your flipper okay? Yeah, we'll just leave it there for now. We're pretty much done with the flipper for now, aren't we? Yeah, I didn't do his belly, but okay. So we're back to feet. Yeah. Ready and action. <laughs> These are crazy. Okay, so I'm going to get under here. Don't jerk your foot, you turd. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I forget people are watching me. So you can see my scissors are at an angle again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maui. He is a love bug. He is. So I don't want to comb up this hair and scissor it, but I do need to comb up and see where it's at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And comb it back down to see what I need to touch. And it kind of lifts it up and up and out and then back down again it keeps it in the shape that you really kind of want it and you can see i'm hardly taking anything yes. off you're just barely taking and only what you wanted just to meet it one. Make sure all the tangles are out from between the toes and everything first. So again, big fat feet. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. I do this big fat feet on a lot of things because I like a lot of hair. If you take your feet in too tight, you lose the whole look of fullness. It's like you can take the body in tight, and if you got big fat feet, you look like you got a full haircut. Like a full, that's full that's body. true. Yeah, that is true. 
So that's why so many of my dogs look like they have a lot of hair, but I show you the comb length like on ammo. Yeah. And it's like, it's actually not that much hair. Right. But it's the other areas <clears throat> that are setting it off. So I'm setting up that, but I'm seeing this angle. And just like the back legs in here, you can see I'm angling towards the other front foot, getting this in tight at an angle. And that gives it kind of that roundness. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. See all that hair there. While I'm doing the feet, I see other things, and now's the time to grab it, actually. Well, because he's standing there and you see it. Right. If you don't do it now, you may forget about that because something else distracts you. So on this side, I can go... Let me finish the foot. <laughs> so I'm looking on your time. Nah, nah, nah. No, we're done. Nah. So I'm combing all this up and out so I can see where I want to set this angulation and this hawk. So here I can take it this way with my scissors at that at same angle but going in the other direction. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on which side of the dog I'm on, which way I'm going. Yeah, well, because you're right or left handed. So it feels differently. <clears throat> So, I'm going to go this way. Just around that back under without taking this. Thanks. So, he really needs more fill here. So, if he were mine, I would fill in that hole. Yeah. He probably lost that when he's had, he's worn belly bands before he was neutered, I'm quite certain. Yeah. And he gets it matted there too. He might still wear belly bands. I don't know because that's where his mats were. That's true. <clears throat> it could be. So he's missing hair in that area. But I would pull that all the way up so I can get my tuck up even better in the right place. So now I'm going to create, I want this depth, but I want him to angle back under here. I don't want him to be slab-sided. Mm -hmm. So I'm angling him back in this way. So with the poodle yesterday, I came this way. Yeah. But because I'm going with the grain as much as I can on him, I'm coming down at an angle. Mm-hmm just to create some spring of rib, which is going to give them even more dimensions. Yeah. <clears throat> See what he's looking like over here. I don't like, he's got too much of a slope in his top line instead of a flat top line. But, but, let me go get some water real quick. I need to mist him down a little bit to give him his wave. Oh, good idea. Sorry, buddy, I just didn't want you to jump in. I had to turn the camera off. And You look nice. You look good. So this is something you got to think of when you're doing your trims is if you're 
wetting a coat back down a little bit, how much hair you're going to leave and where has to be thought of with the wave of the coat being set back into. Which is the same thing we're going to do with Charlie. Charlie keeps a lot of curl. And we set back in a lot of curl on him. So I'm just going to mist over this back. So why are you misting this in? Um, wetting down, his, dampening his coat. Why are you doing that again? Because a Wheaton Terrier is supposed to have a natural wave in a mature coat. He's a mature dog. So a blow-dried coat doesn't have a natural no. wave or curl. So we're trying to put that back. A yeah, bit. So. we took it out. We got to put it back. Yeah. Which is the same thing with doodles. People like the doodles or the legatos. Legatos are supposed to have a rustic look about them. Mm -hmm. So, Carrie Blues are supposed to have curl. And if you blow dry it out, you got to put it back before you send the dog home. So now look at that wave popping. And he looks so natural. And that fixed that top line. Yeah, because his hair was blown out in a way that it normally wouldn't lay. Right. So, so yeah. that before I cut it, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, i got to wet that down. <laughs> yeah. That was a good call. And I can also do this back here to bring this in. And it's going to kind of stay. And I can do it on his front end where it's all blown out here. Lay that down, bring out that wave, and when I go to finish his neck, I'm going to do it here and here, but not here. All right, that's better. Good deal. Now we're just going to let that dry Sorry, bud. while we are finishing the dog. Uh-oh, I got a low battery. Okay. <laughs> hey Raquel Raquel says you I keep forgetting she keeps texting me and I've been too busy you have to send her your email address because she has a tub harness for you oh yeah a tub leash I don't know her email address to send her I'll give it to you okay don't let me forget it no then I just put all that weight on you I means if I forget it's your fault <laughs> Actually, Raquel, you can reach her on her website at ask at right askagroomer.com. Askagroomer.com. It's a contact form. There you go. It's on her website on Grand Style Dog Grooming's website. And if you go down to the contact us, the tab there, um, it's a little form, and you can reach her that way, Raquel. Just askagroomer.com. It's easy to remember. Is that the email address? That's the website. Okay. And it's forwarded to my website. Okay. So it's just askagroomer.com and it'll forward you right to my website contact form. Perfect. Don't fart, dog. <laughs> Am I allowed to fart? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only one allowed to do that. <laughs> Same thing here. Angle this in, angle this under. So, so far this weekend, we've done 
a sporting breed, a terrier, and a toy breed, non-sporting breed. So, and a mixed breed. And a mixed breed. On Thursday we did. And now, booger. Yeah. Remember? He was a booger. He was a booger. His sister was bad. Yeah, I didn't I wasn't here for that. I'm so glad we didn't do it his sister. It would have been a major fail, wouldn't it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I forgot she was so bad. I only did her once before. Aww. And she's young, isn't she? Yeah, and she's been spayed since her first one, and her first one was hard. Oh, I need to set bad. her up for my free, fear-free training. What's that? I don't know about that. What I do with my clients, if the dog is difficult, or if it's a puppy, especially an adolescent puppy, like in that mm -hmm. four to seven-month-old range where they're so impressionable and they're so difficult. Oh, yeah. I give four free 15-minute free fear-free training sessions. Oh, on the grooming table with you. That's awesome mm -hmm. because you're teaching them, training them. And just conditioning them without anything getting seriously done yeah and building a relationship oh that's and i do it for excellent. free because i don't want anything to discourage that pet parent from coming yeah and i don't want cost to be a factor yeah if you didn't they may opt out of it if yeah. it wasn't free and then i do it live or i video it and it helps other people mm -hmm. so they can learn how to train their puppies at home yeah and it helps that puppy's parent Learn mm -hmm. how to train it at home. Absolutely. In and you'd be amazed. Amazed. Because people have seen me stop working on a puppy because he's difficult. Yeah. Send him home. Have him come back for the Fear Free, which I show live. They see the puppy go through the whole per process. And then we finish with the puppy's next groom. And it's like night and day. It's That's so awesome. It's very important. The training, it's training. It's training. And they need it. Mm -hmm. And all new puppies get a free five week, 15 minutes at a time, fit once a week. That's awesome because you're setting up a, the rest of your career with that dog and yeah. to, be, to be positive and good experiences. Exactly. That's really good. And I do it at closing time, so it's on my own oh, time. Yeah. And I love training dogs. Oh, yeah. So it's especially fine. when you don't have to do clipper work or scissor work at the, you know, you're training them so you can do this. It's a hobby. Yeah. It, it's my my fun time. And people might be crazy. Why are you doing that for free? You're giving your own time. What's wrong with you? I'm like, it's fun. <laughs> and who doesn't well, like puppy kisses? Yeah. <laughs> and it's enjoyable. You're teaching this puppy stuff that, that is going to help them in other situations, believe it or not. And people's, my clients' puppies are my puppies. Yes. They're mine. We want success for them, for us, for the owners. I spend so much time each month with my clients' dogs. My weekly clients' dogs spend one-seventh of their life here. You yeah. know? My bi-weekly clients' dogs spend one-fourteenth of their life with me. Yeah. They're my dogs, a good too. chunk. Yeah, it is. Definitely. We share them. A family. Yeah. I'm your auntie. <laughs> yeah. So I'm angling this towards, towards the, the other side of the dog. Not all the way. Oh, you're just coming down in underneath. This gotcha. way. Yeah. To create a barrel rib. Again, yeah. think hexagon. Flat under, up, 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 flat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that theory. That makes sense. That gives you a good visual. Mm -hmm. And then the shoulders straight. This straight, you know? Mm -hmm. This straight. And that applies to so many breeds like Bichons. You're coming straight on down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. We're getting there. Looking good, big boy. You are a lazy standing dog. <laughs> he has been standing a while. Now give him that. But he's, and he's lazy. <laughs> he's lazy, dude. He gets Look at him looking at me like, who are you calling lazy lady? He gets bored quickly. He does. I, I think if I had a personality, it probably would be Terrier, too. <clears throat> to be honest, I get bored very quickly. 
I have to keep things moving, keep things new, or I'll just be like, this is boring. <laughs> All right, so we're making this rear nice and wide, and he's turning again. Wherever you want to go, bud, you're cool. Charlie will soon be here, too. I missed a phone call a minute ago. I hope it wasn't them. All right, so I'm creating a nice little shelf here. Nice pointer romp. Get it as tight in as I can without showing skin. That's challenging because the, the hair is, you know, it's not very thick back there either. Mm -mm. All right. You get a pretty good job on the feet. I'm going to take the harness back off. I'm going to work on the head and the neck. <coughs> You're not leaving. It's important to do this neck last so that it's in the right balance with the rest of the dog. <clears throat> so I'm angling up this hexagonish kind of shape, blending it into the neck hair, creating a natural neck. You want it to look like it is not You've got to be careful where you wet it, that it's not dipped in more than it really is, you know what I mean? Yeah. you got to fluff it back out a little. Okay. So I'm going to angle this in. Not as tight as it was below this. You basically want to make sure it's no wider and no nar more narrow than the head. And you want to drop it down, make sure there's no humpback kind of look here. Mm -hmm. No. Good boy. And I do kind of skip around because I see things. Well, you see it at the moment. I'm not going to follow you down there. <laughs> I will <I'll> be like this. <laughs> so get that roundness to his skull. Tighten that up a hair. Turn his ears good. Wants to lay down. You're not gonna let him. Put your foot back. All right. So now is where the Jonathan David thinning shears gonna come in. Cause they're not gonna take out as much as mine will. Right. I think yours are 44 tooth and mine are 46 tooth. Then mine are serrated on the edges too. Of the <coughs> tooth is serrated, so it. It really softens that. So we want a brick shape head. We don't want the head to be overpowered with hair. We don't want it to come out too wide. So basically I'm going to comb it and shake it a little. Hang on. We're in front of this. 
Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll just move it over here. <clears throat> so I don't want it too wide and too heavy so that it loses its brick shape. So I'm gonna come up under and judiciously one snip, one snip, one snip, one snip up under the hair. Use my fine tooth comb, comb it out. And get rid of all that hair, all that bulk. and see if it's still wide. It kind of is, like right in here. So I'm gonna come up under here. Get all the way up under. One snip, comb it out. Now it's coming in flatter. We're still too wide over here. You gotta look at where you're wide. Yeah. You go one snip. Comb it out. Now they're supposed to have a lot of beard and a big head, but it's supposed to be brick shaped too. So you don't want it fanning out here at the ends. So we've got a bulk right there. getting that brick shape. If I remember correctly, too long of a beard is a problem, but I would never trim it without the owner's permission. Yeah. It's a characteristic of the breed. But it can also throw them out of balance. Yeah, that's Charlie. Yeah. Right, how do we want to handle that? Uh, you stay here with him because we're still tweaking it a bit. Come on, let me. I'm gonna close the door so he can't see Charlie. That's going a good idea. I don't have my finger. Stop. 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 I you know you're distracted. Did you do great? Hey. Sit. 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 Honey. Come on. Love you too. I want you to relax. I know you're very aware of everything. I know. How about if I comb you out a little bit? Stay. Good boy. Hey. And he beautiful guys. He's worked hard today too. It's a lot of work for our dogs when we're grooming them. I know. Yes, it is too a lot of work. Hey, Maui, good boy. No. It's okay. It's not time for you, baby. It's not time. Oh, you. You look nice, bud. Very nice. I'll tell you, let me see if I can work it out. He has such a beautiful coat. Stay and be a good boy. All right, Charlie is matted.
bad. I thought he would be bad. When I saw that coat, I thought there's no way anybody would do that at but home. But they've been maintain. grooming him at home, so they shouldn't have had to maintain him there. That's all. I'm gonna... He's big too. He's grown. So we're gonna do a pre Let's finish this and we'll talk about that. We're gonna do a pre bath. Starting to stress. No, we're gonna do a pre bath brush out on him. It's necessary. Mm -hmm. He's not one that we're gonna de mat while we're blow drying. It would be a mess. We would be able to. Hold on. We're losing track of what we're doing here. Okay, so. Do we have anything else to cover on film? I, we want to get the final pictures. I do want to get the that. final video. But are we, have we pretty much gone around and we've pretty done much face, we've done rear, tweak front. It. Okay. Scissors. And then I just want to get everything into place, clean off the table. And then we'll take some final <clears throat> 360s and pictures. Yeah. What did I get myself into? He is being a good boy, Jill. All right, well, let's think about this. So he's matted. He's got what? He look, from those pictures, he looks like he could have as much as four or five inches of coat. They knocked some off. But okay. he's going to be up for his pictures because he hears the other dog needs a terrier. So this is a perfect time to get some good looking stuff on him. <laughs> pictures. Yeah. Because he's going to have himself all pulled forward. You're right. Instead of scrunched up in the ball. He looks good on that dark blue. That works. That looks real good for him. Thanks all them guys. So they can see a better outline of the buddy buddy. Let me get everything all put in place. Guard. White. The light is still green. You can't cross. <laughs> so people don't realize sometimes how much stress matting adds in oh. to the groom. What you doing? I'm making a collar. Because he's not letting me holding his head. Oh, so I'm, I didn't know what you were up to. I'm just making a way to stack him nicely yes. without messing up his hair or making him squish himself up. Yeah, and that's just elastic material. Yeah, it's just a quick. Mm -hmm. Hold on. But it's not going to mess up his neck hair. Oh, yes. So I can bring his it's, neck up. Yes, the way we like him to look. Like he normally looks, very alert. We don't want him overstretched back here. I'm just gonna do a little fun video real quick before I get some pictures. Hold on, stay, stay, stay. Uh, I can't make it. Stay. I got him. Sorry. Breathe, girl. Stress. Mm -hmm. Stress has just been added. Well, there's two of us now, so All right. we'll work it out. I need my other comb. And we don't have a time frame. That takes a little cool. bit of stress out of things, doesn't it? It does. Yes. Don't forget that. Yeah. It's not like you got another dog coming in in two hours. That's true. Now that's what a Wheaton's head should look like right yeah, there. Yeah, you bet. Oh, that's gorgeous. Let me 
this stuff. All right, there we go. That's a still. Hold on, let me fix this. Those things matter. Some of them. No, I had to take some of the face in portrait. See. It's gorgeous. Did you see the ones I did on that conquer with portrait? Yes. Absolutely beautiful. No, I'm taking a little bit of both. I'm going to get them straight on. Hold on, guys. I might want to get the rear, too. Let me angle them this way so you can get the rear and let me comb it into position. Because you want to show the width of rear. And I can see how squared up he is the whole way down the line. Mm -hmm. It's nice. And you also want to show that you don't see skin. Yes. Because that will be important to point out in the video. That he's just a natural looking dog. No baldness around the butthole, no baldness up yeah. underneath. Good. All right. Yeah, I, I got a lot of good ones. All right. All right. Let's go put you up. Say hey, goodbye, Mary. Maui. I need to give him one kiss. I really do like you a lot. I do. Can I just... No? Why? You sick of it? He's like, I'm done. I don't want he's to. like, I want to go get that doodle thing. Yeah, he's focused He's like, on can I go get that doodle thing? He's focused on that right now. He's like, I want to go get that big doggy. He looks good. Oh. I told you the por por portrait. Oh, my word. The portrait pictures are going to be great for, like, thumbnails in the future of other things. And it is correct on the Wheaton to have this hair covering the eye a bit. Yeah. You're not supposed to hollow out around the eye. You're supposed to have it covered up a bit. Yeah, that's good. Ugh. Good job, big boy. I'm sorry. Make sure you look good on the floor. So see on the floor how wide he looks? Let me take a picture of him on the... Yes, he does. Come on. Okay. And we have this wave. I might need to fix some of that.
put my phones on the charger. So I'm gonna go do that first. So I won't forget to do it. It's all right, Charlie Boy. All right, let me get everything disinfected and ready for the next one. Yeah, we're gonna give us a few minutes, guys. We're gonna clean things up. Yes. charge these black ones and put the white ones out. Stretchy thing worked great for bringing that up over his neck hair. For doing what? Bringing the collar up over his neck hair. Yeah. So see the height. Very inventive. You may be on to something there with all your little quick inventions. You think they're just a quick fix, but they could prove to be helpful in other situations for other people. <coughs> oh, yeah, for a show dog collar? Yeah. I like the way you can use your groomer's harness as, you know, keeping it on the dog as a, you know, way to walk them from A to B, too. Mm -hmm. And I found nice. it's hugely helpful for dogs who, who don't want you hanging on to, say, their arm. Yeah. And where you have to kind of hold them up by the elbow to keep the arm still. Yeah. I'm holding the harness under the arm and just bracing my finger just there. there. And it makes them stop pulling. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it works. It has many uses yeah, when you're working with your dog. My senior dogs that are very difficult around their head are the puppies. Yeah. I move my fingers up under it on the chest. And I can hold the front end of the dog without holding the dog. And then they're like, oh, you're not trying to yeah, try to control me. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. I don't have to resist anything. It's a little less <coughs> of a challenging situation for them. And dogs, especially like senior dogs, when they are, say when you try to hang on to their head, yeah. and a puppy too, they feel like they're being bitten by another dog. Yeah. Even though you don't have teeth, you're coming in like this. Yeah. And they're saying, ooh, something's attacking me. I yeah. must fight. I got to retaliate against that. Yeah. yeah. And with also with older senior dogs, they often have sore teeth, bad mm -hmm. teeth. So anytime you're holding around the mouth area, it, 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 they mind it. Absolutely. I never hold an old dog or a puppy by the head like that. No. They have it. All right, I think I need to empty my bladder again before I need a big guy. We're gonna need some tougher brushes for this one. Did I bring any of my brushes? No, I only brought clippers. So do you want me? I, do you want me to get that? I'm gonna use the mat zapper. We're gonna use this. And let me to get my wall can ten over here. Cordless. Oh, I got a new brush. I'm talking clippers. She's talking brushes. Well, we need the brush <laughs> for this one. Well, I know. Where did I put the new brush? It's a stiffer brush. I think it's in the other room. It's perfect. It was an accidental order and it worked out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then I guess it wasn't an accident after all.
it is kind of long pin, but it's medium and it's firm. It's very firm. It's perfect for this dog. It's yeah. It's stiffer, and so we're gonna do a pre bath brush out, which you guys rarely ever see me do. But this coat in this condition warrants a pre bath brush out. So. Can we, will we be using the matting spray? I'm going to use the Wonder Spray because the detangling spray is too heavy of a wetness for his coat. So I really, but we are washing him. We are, but it's a wetness that when we're brushing, oh, it's, it's going to be too wet. It'll slide right off the mat. I want something greasy like the Wonder Spray. Okay, when you say matted, you'll see. <laughs> Worse than Corazon, when she came in? Uh-huh. And we're gonna save big dog. We're gonna save this coat. Yeah. Is that what our goal is? It is. I gotta go pee. I'm gonna read. <laughs> I'm gonna open any Irish pub quick. You got another six pack. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but we're gonna have a customer dog today. Slow down. Wait. I'm not ready for you to get up there yet. Alright, hup. Good boy. There we go. Say hi, Charlie. Say hi. Say I'm cool dude. Cool dude. We gotta wait on Amy. Oh. oh, my goodness. All right. Oh, man. You guys have no idea how tight these mats are. Amy's going to have a conniption. This is so bad, Amy. Oh, it's so bad. Stay. Oh my goodness. No touchy yet. Hi. <laughs> now that is a standard. Uh, I mean a standard doodle. <laughs> they always belch. Hi, Charlie. It's okay, sweetheart. We're gonna work this out today, buddy. We're gonna work it out. <laughs> it's okay. You guys are gonna see Suzanne do her first clip down. No, I'm not. <laughs> His owners would rather take him home than have it cut short. You're stressing. Maybe we should do a quick 15 minutes of yoga. 
My body doesn't stretch good. I might need another cup of go-go juice, though. Hi, Charlie. Oh, you're a big boy. Isn't he? Yes, he's a good boy. Look at him at this angle. Oh. He's cool. huge. Great shape on his. Really cute. They're mm -hmm. they. Well, I don't want to touch him until he's okay with that. He doesn't know me. Look, he's looking away from me. He doesn't know me. It's okay, Charlie. What do you think we ought to do? What should we do today, Charlie? His shape on his face is adorable. His owners came up with that. He's he been getting really home groomed. He's a yeah. home dog. But that is, that's beautiful. It really is. And yeah. that's what they want to keep. I don't blame them. Charlie, I love it. Okay, we got to get busy. Let's go. He's soft. Okay. Now? Feel down deep in here. Charlie, stand. Stand. Good boy. Feels like they brushed the legs, kind of. Yeah, they. You can tell they brushed. They didn't comb. No, like here we got some serious matting. We got serious. Some matting. of it. Feel up here. We got serious matting everywhere. Yeah. The, when we say that, we mean there's a lot of it's dead, bathed in mats. Dead unwanted coat that needs dead removed. Dead unwanted coat that's yeah. been bathed in and felted. Yeah. Which. When you don't, when you do a bath and you like curl in your dog and you don't do a proper brush out after the bath. Okay, Charlie. So when you do a coat like this and you want to keep the curl, you have to brush and comb the entire dog from one end to the other before the bath. Then after the bath, you have to run a wide tooth comb over the entire dog after the bath, then scrunch it and keep your curl. But you cannot wash the dog with it not being thoroughly combed and then leave the curl in the dog's hair or you end up with a felted dog. So that's what we have here. Yeah, let me take, let me do some free, we don't even need to, let me just, don't need to, you can talk and say whatever you want to <clears> do <throat> video. All right. Of pre-Charlie. Hi, honey. Beautiful boy. You know what I see? I see what would be easier for the owners is to do kind of a like a poodle sporting clip. Mm -hmm. They they're very specific in their their likes. The thing is, is we're taking this we're not down a bit we're not. to give them the freedom of they're not maintaining it very well. I know, but it would, would free them have the hair than have to maintain. Okay. We have to stick within. We asked for this dog. Yes. So I we have to stick within. We have to stick within their guidelines. So you know he's not. He is. It's just a lot of dead. There's a lot of dead coat if in here. If it weren't bathed in, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem. It's gonna be a challenge. But because it's bathed in, Ooh, that hi. makes it a problem. I love you, Charlie. <clears throat> so, they, they tried to clip off a bunch around his neck so we can try to match up the length of the neck there. Yeah. And through here and still keep some width. So, I'm going to knock some off with the scissors before we start brushing. Okay, good idea. So, we're unlocking the mats. Not as much as I'd like to, but because the owner has already pre clipped the neck short, I've got to bring it into the neck length anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, otherwise, he's not going to be in balance. This is so much. It's okay. I did not mean to scare you, Charlie. <clears throat> so, I'm going to be strategic about my clipping so that I can keep his whole teddy bear look, uh, bring his body in to match his neck. Keep him thick and wide enough so he maintains his character. Good boy. And try to unlock the mats at the same time. So are you ready? We need mics. 
Are we gonna mic us dematting? We don't have to. We can. We should film some of it, but we can film with your other camera. My Where two are on the charger. Where is my other camera? I think it's by the coffee maker. Okay, you can I think get so. I'm just film with that. That's true, Candace, but I asked to borrow this dog, so I have to, you know, I brought him to me instead of them bringing him to me. We it's a asked difference. for him. Yes, we wanted him. And we do want him. We he's, do want him, and gorgeous. we love him, and he's perfect for he what we're doing. He's a big guy. So here we go. Can you see him good? Hang on, I, 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 I'm trying to open your phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my phone. Okay, I got it, I got it. So are you going to start? I'm going to unlock the mats by snipping off some of this. <clears throat> then I'll just go. Now i got to get my hands Well, we're not going to let him be in pain. We're going to do this very carefully. I love my white toolbox, too. Your guess is a woodle. Oh, yeah, Ooh. we're doing guessing on what this dog is. Yeah. What is he, guys? He certainly looks like a lot of different dogs. Oh, Tay sees a standard poodle in a doodle trim. Tay? Yes. Oh, he certainly could pass as a standard poodle in a doodle trim. He certainly could. I'm going to stop being like that. I like that little handheld thing, but I never have a free hand. No, you, <laughs> you have no use for this, lady. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. Shoot. Come on, tighten up. No, we won't hurt him. We of promise. course not. All right, here we go. Oh, shoot, I was accidentally filming. We're going to delete that. Doesn't it like my finger? Well, stop. Uh, sometimes these older phones get stuck and you have to restart the stupid phone. Mm. It, see, it's not even wanting to turn off. Oh, I think it's because it's on this. Oh, you're right. Smarty, smarty. That is why. Billy says he's a standard poodle. Ah, what makes you guys think he's a standard poodle? Yeah, why do you think he's a poodle? What makes you think that? Ah, there's another poodle. He's a spoo. You can't see his tail, a golden doodle. Hmm. He's too big for a poodle. Oh, his eyes are too big for a poodle. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Listen to you. Hmm. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready, set, go. Here we go, guys. You ready? So first, we're going to set the top line. Let's see if I can drop this table more. No, nope. that's as far as it goes. This is all pre-bath, pre-brush. So why I use these little sharp 7-inch shears is because when you're going through really thick stuff, it'll. by the time you get to the end of the longer shears, it tends to push your shears apart. So I like a lot of power in my scissors. So less stress on my wrist by using a shorter that scissor. That makes sense. Because you're chunking that whole long scissor. And yeah. You're... And I saw on a Facebook post this morning, I made a couple of comments because somebody, a couple people were ripping into somebody for holding their scissors wrong and oh. talking about what complete idiots they are. Oh. Excuse me. I hold my scissors wrong and I'm not an idiot. Which means you're calling me an idiot too and yeah. I'm here to say, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> How we hold our scissors in a, is an individual thing. I don't care what somebody else thinks about how I hold my scissors. This is how I hold my scissors and I do a fine job. Thank you. <laughs> and you've done a lot of finished champions with that. Okay, so the owner pre-cut the neck. Now you can see it with the collar off. So I can't do a swoop up like I did with ammo because I have no neck hair. So he's going to look long bodied because his neck hair is short and I'm going to have to work within that framework. 
And I think part of that might be because he was wearing a type of collar that's well known for breaking neck hair. Yeah, I think that too, because that's where the severity of the mats were, were on the collar. Mm -hmm. So, I want to take a lot off his top line, and I want to build him out wide, and I want to get off a lot of hair at the same time. So I want to keep him looking very fluffy, but also make him tight. So I'm building a rounded rib cage, angling this end to knock off a lot of these mats, but still keeping some width on the dog. Take some of this. And I'll get into my longer scissors later. Once yeah. I get through all You'll this thick stuff. You'll definitely need your longer scissors on this big guy. When you get the scissors for real. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I did not look up the scissors last night. Huh? Oh, I was going to ask you. <laughs> so one of these days I'm just going to send you a link. Don't forget that. No. no. <laughs> Don't be doing that. Ain't nobody got no time for that. <laughs> it would give you a laugh. <laughs> it's an inside joke. <laughs> and it really should stay there. Trust me, guys. It's... Come on, Charlie. Turn, 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 turn. They turn, were here turn. yesterday, though. Turn, they know turn, exactly turn, what turn, we're turn, talking turn. about. Good boy. Stand. Good, Charlie. Stand. Good boy. You are So handsome. you can see he's already real tight right here. So I'm just match him up to that. And still keep some width. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I don't want to Good boy, baby. Oh, he's a good boy. It's okay, big boy. So by scissoring off the top half of these mats, I'm actually not cutting in deep enough to really do that, but at least getting some of this off, it's going to make this whole process easier on him. We'll be able to brush him out easier. So the young man in the family doesn't want to see his testicles, Oh, but he's super matted in oh, here. Oh, well that's a, that's so that's a tender kind of, area. That's kind of a hard request to meet. Yeah. So I'm going to try to meet the young man's request of not seeing his dog's testicles. But I'm not going to brush out. Such a tender area. Mm -mm. That's not fair to the dog. Mm -mm. So I'm going to try to leave a little drape here. Good boy, Charlie. And just come in around it and cut it. And this is where, as groomers, we, we tend to try to meet owner's requests as best we can. And we really do consider it. But when, when we are presented with a challenge, it's not that we don't care about an owner's request. We have to think about the pet owner, the dog, ourselves. All of us are part of this package. Yeah. And, you know, and like you guys out there, you're like, don't hurt the dog. Don't hurt the dog. We don't want to see you hurt the dog. I'm not going to hurt Charlie. Yeah. So but that's always on our front mind, too. Absolutely. So we have to meet the pet owner's request and the dog's request and what is ethical. Good boy. Looking good, big boy. All right, so 
I'm going to use Igram Wonder Spray, and I'm not going to go ahead of myself too much. I'm going to keep it fresh in the area I'm working because I don't want the coat to soak it all in. So to show you what we're talking about when we're talking about mats, see how we cannot get a comb anywhere through any inch of this dog? Nowhere, not even the brushed areas where they brushed them out, can we get a comb through? We gotta comb it to scissor it. Yeah. I might be able to get it through his tail, almost, yeah. Right here I can comb him. Up here, oh. I can't comb him. Face, I can't comb him. Ears, I can't comb him. Under here, I can't comb him. So when a dog is dematted properly, when a dog comes in ready for a haircut from home, we should be able to slide a comb from one end of his body to the other. If we cannot, we consider it matted. If I were charging for this haircut, which I'm not, if I were charging, it would be $1.25 a minute for everything I'm gonna do before the bath. So, you wanna consider that when you take your dog to the groomer, that if they're charging a dematting fee, watch how long it takes. Yes. Because I'm gonna get a comb through this dog before I put him in the tub. Because it's already been bathed in and felted, I must do a pre-bath brush out. Yeah. So dollar twenty-five a minute starting now. We'll it is two thirty-two. I'm not charging them, but I'm just right. We'll figure what it would be. And I'm oh, a fast honey. worker. I'm a fasty matter, and I am not wasting a second here. We don't have time to spare, you're right. And especially if you were on your schedule. Mm hmm Well, you would... If you were on my schedule, I would have sent home. Yeah, because you wouldn't, wouldn't have had it. the time frame to do it. You probably would have had to then say, well, we need to schedule right now a time when I can demat him, and then I'll send him home again, and then groom him again, because you probably wouldn't have such a big block of time in your schedule. 99.9% so of doodles that go to the groomer in this condition come home shaved to yeah. the skin. And that's what people often, they are confused. They, they say, but he wasn't matted. I just brushed him out last night. Right, and, and, and you know, it's not a, it's not a competition thing between groomers. I think she's here for uh, for the, and I don't know where I sit down with these. It's okay, big boy. Just chill all day with you. Can I brush you? Can I brush on you? It's okay, Charlie. You came in as Charlie. You're going to leave as Charles. So sophisticated. It sounds like royalty. You're gonna feel like royalty when you leave. That's our goal today for you, Charlie. Yeah. Cause you like to feel special all the time. Say I am special all the time. Say I am special all the time. Oh boy. so much dead hair you know this is this is the problem right here guys we have to get rid of that before we can proceed or even think about even a bath oh. he has a urinary tract infection there's drops of blood on the table 
It's common, but I have to show Suzanne when she gets back. It's okay, baby. It's okay. And it happens. I know, big boy. I'm brushing off the ear leather, not the, against it. The ear leather is a tender area for them. I know, big boy. It's okay. Good job. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. I actually would prefer a different brush. We have our favorites. What we're used to dematting with. You know, this we're gonna get this dead hair all day out of this coat. Stay, Charlie. I know Suzanne doesn't have very big of brushes because she usually throws little dogs. Let me try this. I feel like this flexible brush. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Were you drinking beer before you got here? You don't have an awful lot of big belches coming out of you. Yeah. You do. Oh boy, this is real matted. I mean, really matted up here, guys. Honestly, I would have to take him down if he was my dog in the shop. I know it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, so what are we going to do, you mad him for three hours? I know you are. She loves a good challenge, doesn't she? <laughs> it's okay, Charlie. You stay with me. Goodbye, beautiful. Bye, Maui. Maui's leaving. He looks good. Okay, you stay here. You're not ready to leave yet, Charles. No. You still have to get beautiful. Yes, you do. Like Maui's mom's happy. You look so beautiful, she said. He <laughs> does. It's okay, good boy. Oh, honey. The mat's in there. She was so thrilled. I heard. Dripping in blood? I think he has a urinary tract infection. Oh. Ugh. I think. I think the vet's gonna have to. Poor boy. See Charles. Poor boy. All right. So what brush you got? That ain't gonna do shit. Well, stuff. I know, but I didn't like your brush. You don't like my purple? Well, that one I wanted. The, bigger the long one. pin slippers and the disinfecting UV sterilizer in the other room. Okay. Let me grab that. That'll work. Better. Better. So I'm able to put some power into my brush because he's not wet. And I'm sinking this brush way down on it deep. And I'm pulling the skin up and line brushing as best I can, feeding a little bit of hair at a time. So see, I'm line brushing. Yeah. And I'm putting some power into my brush. This is why we're exhausted after brushing out a big dog. Even, especially if he's mad, because we gotta work faster. 
She told me to tell you thank you. She can't wait for your video. Oh, awesome. She's owned several champions. She she knows her Wheatons, and Aww. she said she was in tears watching him stacked on that table. <laughs> he looked beautiful. He did. She has it's a very well-known Wheaton breeder who grooms him all the time, and she's like, if we could have had you keep grooming him, oh, and we would have kept showing him. Yeah. And you had to stop because of your injury. And she said, nobody treats him on the table like I do. I believe that. People don't they have the patience. They stand still instead of following him around the table. Oh, yeah. Which sets up a battle and a bad attitude. This is he was out. happy. This is coming it out. It is. We are getting dead hair. It's not as bad as I thought. It's going to take a lot, and I'm probably going to feel it for a week. This is the area that... I can work on that okay. and get that out without totally brushing it out. So okay, line then. brushing, guys, we're holding the hair up and pulling it out with the brush and so we're, we're getting to the skin. It keep when you're line brushing too. I'm grabbing a whole fold of skin, which doesn't hurt him. I'm holding the skin tight, so as I'm brushing in harsher, it is just grabbing the hair, but it's not pulling the skin. Mm -hmm. If the skin's not the skin's rolling taut. with the brush, correct? Yeah. And that makes it not hurt. If you're letting that brush pull the skin out like this, then it's yanking on the skin. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's techniques in doing this professionally, oh, and I don't know if you're doing it, but as I create a new line, I'm spraying that area, and that really makes a difference, sliding this stuff out. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm Dang. loving I did it. <laughs> I'm loving the Icrom Wonder Spray. It's now my Yeah, I like thing. it too. I would not use it for setting apart. I would not use it on a silky coated Yorkie. Poodle coats, doodle coats, wheat coats, carry blue coats. What did you say these are? The number two coat type? Are they number three? This is a number three. So number where three the secondary type. hairs are pretty much as long as the primary hairs. All right. When you say he's a number three? I would say so. along. That's new terminology for me, so I'm learning. Yeah, and that. me too, Suzanne. I have, it's almost like a quiz I do in my head daily. So is this about, part of the Eve San Bernard theories? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We, we all learn constantly, you including bet. us professionals. And, and we so, love learning. Let me turn him around here, guys. Show you where we're getting real quick here. Look. I'm still not getting a comb through. I thought it would slide. Okay, it's gonna slide oh, there. You're getting closer. Uh, not yet. Never mind. Close, but no cigar. So this is where your wide tooth comb comes in. I have a second one over there if you need it. Okay. This is where your comb. I just brushed really good here. I thought my comb was gonna slide through. No cigar. That's why you need a comb at home. Yeah. And you need the right comb. You need a wide tooth comb. For your coat type. Your dog's coat type. So for Charlie, you need a Chris Christensen Better Comb number 004. Without a doubt. It's okay, big boy. You must invest in that. Good boy. So, let's see. Not yet. The whole goal is to make sure that comb can slide through his coat. And don't forget to pull apart the mats and loosen them. It helps. It definitely helps. Good boy. You've been a very good boy, Charlie. He sure is. He's a good, he's a good man. Yes, you are. He is, you it's are. It's all right, I'm not gonna hurt you, buddy. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. You are so loved. I've watched your videos. You are your family's superstar. They absolutely adore you. And they right. should. We're getting there. Mm-hmm. We can do this. It's okay.
Okay, big man. Boy, his coat is soft when it's all aerated like that. I get the dead coat out. It's soft. So that makes us wonder, what is this dog, right? Soft. Hmm, interesting. He looks like your dog. He does. He looks a lot like my big Gus. And my big Gus is a golden doodle. Hmm? Your big Gus is a golden doodle. Yes, he's a golden doodle. And he's an F1B, but he looks like a poodle. Go for huh. gear. He should look more of that drop coat, in my opinion. That's the whole thing with mixed breeds. Yes. You never know. Like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once we get this fluffed up pretty good, before we can get the comb through it, we're going to scissor again. And then brush some more. Come in properly brushed out, we can stick them straight in the tub like we did the wheat and terrier. What time was that clock when we started him? Like two shoot. It was uh I don't know, two thirty-five. Okay. Does that sound right? Something like that. So that is a dollar twenty-five a minute times twelve minutes so far. Oh, by the way, the Wheaton's owner paid me in full. Oh, did she? She did. She's so pleased. I offered it for free. She yes. She's pleased. She was. Oh, God love her. She's like, I need you. Oh. I need you. She's like, please, just him. We hear that a lot, right? Just take my dog. But she's not allowed to tell anybody. I love him. I love him all, though. Mm. Love Charlie, too. Yes, I love Charlie, too. But there's a difference. It's a difference. On a six-week schedule, we would never see him like that again. Mm. He's yes, too much. I did before. Oh. He's a good yeah. boy. He's a, he's, a, he's a lot of dog. He's a good dog. He is a good dog. He's a lot of dogs. He's a lot of cool. Good Charles. I told him he's coming in as Charlie, but he's leaving as Charles. <laughs> he's going to feel that way. I told him. Right, Charlie? Okay, baby. And I, I'm sure you're doing this too, Suzanne. When I'm dematting, if I'm hammering away at an area in the back of the leg, you know, I'm going to town, I'll come back up to the front. Uh -huh. And then I'll go back to the middle. I don't want to sit, for many reasons, you don't want to cause any irritation to the skin, but it, it gives the dog a break from that area. Maybe that area pulls a little more than up here, and he's starting to get annoyed. Exactly. I can tell you, Charlie's a very tolerant dog, so for him to show us that he's annoyed, it probably would take a lot. I still like when I'm grooming live, and I'm doing poodle feet. I shave the poodle feet before the bath, mm -hmm. but I don't make them perfect. And then I shave the poodle feet after that, so I don't sit there and spend too much time on their feet. But then each time is a short session. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And it just, For the dog. It makes it a better experience. Yeah. That, I agree with that. That's, that's very forward thinking. And I tell them that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna work on scissoring this some more while you're over there. Okay. I'm just try not to bounce them around too much. I don't worry about it. When you scissor dogs with their chest heaving in and out or yeah, I know. And you're you're constantly going, and waiting for it to stop with every move. You're a good boy. Good boy, Charlie. What I'm going to do for his video, 
is uh, the footage we're taking on your phone right now is going to be um, it. It's going to be all voiced over. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the condition that we started with. In fact, when you and I do our exit interview, we can talk about that together and some of our discussion will be the voice of for this footage. A pre be good time to have a beer. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'm not going over there for beers tonight. <laughs> I could have bought a 30 pack for what they charged me. I'm still cheap like that. I won't spend it if it's a rip off. And that's a rip off. <laughs> I think my vet was surprised I still wanted baby's teeth done, even though she told me they looked really she, good. She was willing to say we can wait. Yeah, I, I could hear the conversation on the phone. Yeah, I'm not. I, I, I make the call on that stuff because I know how quickly you can end up losing those front teeth on a toy poodle. And you know what's going to happen to baby if she loses her front teeth? Exactly. <laughs> Who wants that she's for a beautiful? She's too young for that. Exactly. Her day will come. But not an animal. All right, so we do tapered ears on him. So oh, okay, where it's just uh, kind of all into the head, kind of like a puppy look. Yeah. So to get these mats out from under the ears, I'm just chunking here, which will allow these ears to lie flat to the head too, which is fine. This wonder spray is. It's good. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Yes. I'm thrilled with it. I brushed out my poodles the other night, and I looked at them when I got home. They were past due for their bath, but I didn't want to give them a bath because we were doing them. Mm -hmm. And I looked at them when I got home, and I'm like, you guys look like you just had a bath. Oh, my word. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were so fluffy, so shiny. Soft, too. Like, and just felt it. It like lifted and separated the hairs like it was blow dry, just like what it's doing yeah. down here. It's really cool stuff. Yeah, I'm going to get several bottles of it so that I um, have a nice little stockpile. Me too, before I burn messes up. Yeah. Let's let's pray they don't. That would be like you or me selling our businesses and you got new owners coming. It in. would be a completely different business. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think a couple suggestions we can give mom and dad is one just to, to groom, groom him more often. Definitely when you bathe him, which is important when a dog in this much coat, to bathe him often. The but, very, but he has to be thoroughly brushed out. The very first time I did him, there was a very in-depth conversation about the curl. He has to have curl after the bath, and it's a lot more curl than we would normally do. You can't get that kind of curl just by spritzing down the coat. Uh huh. So typically when I do him, I completely groom him before the bath. Oh. I completely brush, comb, and scissor him before the bath. Then I blow dry the legs, kind of like a carry. Mm -hmm. I blow dry the mustache. I allow the head and ears to dry curled. I allow the trunk of the body to dry naturally curled. Mm -hmm. And then I come back and I scissor the legs and I spritz over the legs for like a light wave and allow the heavy curl to set into the trunk of the body. Mm -hmm. There's an art to this. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people who like their curly doodles make the mistake of allowing them to air dry after the bath to have a natural curl, but they don't realize that it takes a very, very, very specific plan of action, which is why I wanted this dog for this video, because there's a lot of confusion about how to maintain a curly coat. And okay, baby. I see a lot of groomers look at an image of a curly doodle type and say, oh my gosh, that dog's matted. And I look at the picture and I'm like, no, he's got nicely set ring-like curls. Yeah. He's not matted. Right. I can tell by looking at the picture. 
But when I looked at Charlie's pictures on his Instagram for his most recent ones, I'm like, uh oh, he's getting mad at. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah, so yeah, it wasn't. He can. It wasn't his normal curl. It was more like his normal curl looks like this right here, which is beautiful. And I agree. Yeah. I totally agree that doodles look really cute curly. Sure. It's like a natural teddy bear, like a wrinkled teddy bear. It looks like something would be sitting on the, the shelf with, as a stuffed animal. Right. It makes you want to just wrinkled, go to bed with it. A wrinkled teddy bear is what we're trying to create with him. Ooh, that's going to be awesome. I agree that it's beautiful. Ooh. Hold up. I got to go get something. I'll be right back. You keep a hold of him. A six pack? No. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> I don't know, Charlie. I'm just. It's been a long weekend. You know what? This is going to be a fun groom, though. It's challenging, but it is going to come together like gangbusters. It's going to look pretty awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait, Charlie. I gotta change something in the room. I gotta redecorate the room real quick. Okay. <laughs> gotta redecorate the room. Aw, hold up. I wonder if this is gonna fit between the plants. I don't think so. You want me to grab those plants? That's it. Oh, look at that. This is Charlie. Oh my gosh. And this is when I used to groom him. Stay there. And this is his finished wrinkled look. Oh, so this is what we're going for, other than the face. The face is going to be like more like what Mama Dada has. Oh, and he's fully groomed, just put back to his... He looks like Big Gus, period. My dog. So this is Charlie in his wrinkled, beautiful look. Only we're leaving his face a bit fatter now. So he's keeping a fatter face. Is it crooked? Yeah, Still crooked. I know. All right. How is it on? Oh. Jesus. I'm going to get that on there. <laughs> we had to put Charlie up behind Charlie. You need help? Yes. Okay. There's one there. One on. There we go. Almost. There. Okay. There's Charlie. Oh my gosh, that is freaking awesome. There's Charlie. See Look the wrinkle? At you, Charlie. That's what we're Good He was a puppy. Well, he wasn't a puppy there. He was He was young though, wasn't he? He was, might have been about ten months old there. Oh, Charlie. If, so anyway. That's what we're trying to achieve. Stay, Charlie. You know, I do that, too, when I'm um, working in my shop in Pennsylvania. I'm grooming a dog, and I'm just like, hey, wait a second. And I go in my stop room, <laughs> and I pull out a big wall hanging of the dog. <laughs> you know, that's everyday grooming stuff. It happens all the time. Crazy. You're the crazy <laughs> dog lady. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Picture. Really? Took yeah. that. She's a she's professional. Oh, I was gonna say <laughs> that looks pretty. She's a professional for Pretty darn good. <laughs> that explains that. <laughs> yeah, she's good. <laughs> she does she do a lot of animal photography. Stirs, I think. There is a whole business. I know. Oh, she's very good. You see what she does with his Instagram page? Yeah. She's very, very yes. good. Very creative. Animal photography uh -oh. a huge demand. Let me scoot you guys back in. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Big demand for animal photography. Even mm -hmm. if she just did it seasonal. Valentine's Day, um, <laughs> Fourth of July, um, definitely Halloween and Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's why I used that in my photography room set up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you 
fine. I mm. meant to get his picture up before we started. You are so precious. Yes. Good boy. A good boy. All right. We are 25 minutes into the brush out. Got him between his toes, we can snip those out. He does. I'm just loosening it up because I know I'm not going to get it out with a brush. Charlie, I smell urine on your feet. I think you got too much coat or you're not bathed often enough. You're peeing on yourself. You're peeing on yourself and you're not even European. <laughs> I might have no choice but to wash him and brush him out with the conditioner. Some of this, yeah. Because it's too dirty. It is to when it's slide out. It is. But when it's clean and conditioned, I think it will slide out. But we have to be careful because he's an apricot color and they have sensitive skin. And if we go brushing on that sensitive wet skin, yeah. That's why I wanted to do a pre bath brush out. It's not it's not a The kind that I would want to do wet. So the way you keep your dog from peeing on their front legs is you grow a wick on their sheath to direct the stream downwards. So you grow some hair there on the sheath and it'll drop down and then when they pee, it'll direct it'll the follow flow. follow that. Absolutely. I mean, that's what most show dogs, they do because they don't want to pee on everything. They'll pee on everything, yeah. So you let that hair right on the, the pee-pee grow, just right on the pee-pee, that's it. And it creates a hairline, and when they start peeing, it directs the stream. <laughs> that's what he needs. Yeah. You need a pee stream. <laughs> Good boy. Yeah, especially brushing out around your testicles. It's a tender area. Don't want to see them. How? Oh, why do we have them? <laughs> that would be nice. Mm -hmm. This is tender skin right here, guys. I kind of pull it out and hold it, and I hold it with my thumb. So I'm very focused on exactly what part of this hair on the flank I'm brushing. Just It's just a tender, tender area for him. But it has to be brushed. That's why it's often mad if people are afraid to go ahead and brush that at home. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it. This is not brushing your dog, just so everybody knows. No, this you have to separate it and get down near the skin. You have to get in here. Yep. And see from the skin out. And then is slowly feed a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more as you go, sliding your hand. 
super duper important. All right, we're 31 minutes into a D mat at $1.25 a minute. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. I told everybody to watch off their Instagram and they're going to be embarrassed. A little bit. Yeah, oh well. done now I'm misting the entire side of the dog to do more of a sweeping brushing and I'm still grabbing the skin holding a fold so that I'm holding the skin taut ahead of me see grab hold roll the skin over good boy reassure him good boy he is such a good boy he's a wonderful dog yeah can you imagine if our dear Wheaton would have had to have this? We would have been like... He couldn't handle no, it. No, he couldn't handle it. Mentally, he couldn't handle that. <laughs> the Wheaton center was mesmerized. She went home to clean her house and she could not take her eyes off the screen. <laughs> She's that's like, awesome. I didn't get my house cleaned at all. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. large dog in this <laughs> the tri-state area. <laughs> mm -hmm. I used to. <laughs> so yeah. got me this for a lot of work. Ooh, we're getting a comb through, guys. I'm combing. I'm combing. It's showing off I'm over combing. there. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I'm not combing. Combing, not combing. He reached around with his teeth and he's like, excuse me? Oh, did that they feel it? He's like, you can brush, you can't comb. Yeah, not yet. So a dog with hair this thick, you never really want to use a fine tooth comb on him unless he is perfectly brushed. No. Only a wide tooth comb because his hair is too thick. You would actually tease the hair in front of it to make it not slide through the coat by using too fine of a tooth of comb. And that sometimes is what prevents an owner from using a comb because they don't have the right comb. So again, this is Chris Christensen Butter Comb number 004. It's got wide tines. They're very thin. They sink right into the coat. They're firmly or finely smoothed at the end so it doesn't poke the dog. It's really, other, really good. Where's your other? Um, it might be in the like, disinfector. Oh, all right, never mind. We'll just share. Excuse me? We're, we're sharing. No, we're not sharing. I'm not sharing. Are you sharing? I'm not sharing. I'm Amy. Hello. I'm Suzanne. <laughs> I'm not sharing. It's not my name. <laughs> I only knew one Sharon that was a groomer. Yeah. She wasn't a, a wonderful groomer. I've known her since I was a kid. She worked for my mom when she was learning how oh, to yeah. She worked for me later in life and oh my word. Differences mm -hmm. of, of methods. I think she did too many drugs as a teenager. Oh. Sorry if you're watching Sharon. But in the 70s. My mom, all poodles got their toenails painted in the 70s. Yeah, that was a big every thing. Every poodle in the world got their toenails painted. Mm -hmm. And we had every color under the rainbow. Because everybody bought these fancy rhinestone collars that came in all sorts of colors. 
Yeah. So if you had a turquoise color, you got turquoise nail polish. If you had a yellow color, you got yellow nail polish, and so on and so forth. Poodles were the designer dog of the 70s. Absolutely. So, my mom had this big rack in her grooming shop. Every color nail polish under the sun. Well, Sharon had come to work. My mom would tell her, go get the turquoise nail polish. And Sharon would be over there. I don't know what she was on. Lord. She would be over there. Whoa. Oh, God. That's so cool. Looking at all the colors. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. oh, and no. when she worked for me later in life, let's just say she hadn't grown out of that stage. Oh. It's like... Oh boy, no, no, no. I thought you would have grown up by now. I You're like 60 something. I need you to be a little sharper. <laughs> so, this hair's not completely comb throughable yet, so I'm just using the comb and I'm lifting it up and out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back in here and start scissoring some more. Shortening it up, it should keep getting easier and easier, right? Mm -hmm. To brush out. Yeah. So, I'm going to keep doing this. Good boy, Charlie. Good boy, you handsome hunk of man. My arm is on fire. Yeah. I should have said no. But I couldn't. I know. Well, I don't know what you've been telling yourself in your head, but what I've been telling myself in my head is this is our last groom today. It's our last groom of the weekend. Let's make it. I am booked solid tomorrow, though. Of course I am. I will be live all day tomorrow, 10 to 5, and then we'll have our Ask a Groomer at 5.30. Aww. Actually, we should do Ask a Groomer tonight. What I was thinking, we should do the exit video first. Oh, just alone? A, well, we can do it Without live with stream. them watching. Oh, okay. But they yeah. can't ask questions or we won't answer questions till we're done with That's the exit video. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. So... Then we can answer questions together after you guys watch the exit interview. What do you think? Yeah, that, that's what I had in mind. Okay. Definitely. I thought, you know, they can watch it. We're just not going to pay attention to the live yeah. stream. We're going to... Just like be... when you're doing your question and answer on Monday nights, you go through all the stuff you want to go yeah. through, and then you answer questions. And then we get down with it. Yeah, sure. But... Um, my, uh, the exit interview is going to be recorded, like, separately. So I can take it home and incorporate it into the footage that we're getting all weekend. So we're kind of going to be reflecting upon the grooms we did together and um, sharing uh, things that we that became obvious to us during those grooming sessions or uh, things that we may have forgot to point out that were important or whatever. And then that, though, that interview is going to be thrown into all those videos that I put together. And it is going to be a while to get them all done. Just, just so y'all know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't work for a, a production company. <laughs> That's what some, when somebody looked at one of my videos, that was an old video of Nairdale. Yeah. And it wasn't a whole video. And it wasn't intended to be like a YouTube video. Yeah. But I found it in my video stuff when I was cleaning out my phone. And I'm like, I should probably share that because there's some good stuff there. Yeah. And, and it was in like portrait format. And or it just wasn't a whole video. Yeah. But it had good stuff. Right. It was clipper work on a white, on a Airedale. Okay. And then somebody comes in with the comments and they're like, uh, your it? production skills are lacking kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm a dog groomer. I'm not a video producer. Yeah. I'm a dog groomer. That's it. That's all I am. So, yeah. if you want well done videos, go see Amy. <laughs> well, but there again, it's like, um, you know, for three years, I worked night and day on those videos and didn't make a dime. Yeah. So, you were, what I was producing was free. My time was taken to do it. Mm -hmm. So the comments that I would get like that too, I would be like, wow. And it's like, I'm tough shit. shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't like it, don't watch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to leave a curtain and get off as much as I can too. 
Yeah, I'm not going to stop while you're back there. That's okay, I'm good. That looks like an abscessy kind of thing. Yes. And it's right on his, his rump bone, which is probably what started it when he sits hard. Maybe. And he ruptured it. You need to be very careful there. Yeah. They can, like, damage a hair follicle, and then it gets impacted. And... Speaking of hair follicles, mm -hmm. when we do the Carrie Blue, we can show something on mine if she's still alive, or at least discuss it. What? Well, she's 14. Um... There's a skin problem that is specific only to Carrie's. Oh, I never knew this. No other breed, neither did my vet. And when we started discussing what was going on with her, the vet's like, I've never seen anything like that before. Let me research, research. it. Oh, wow. And she found out that it was specific only to Carrie's. What is it? Now, it's what? kind of an autoimmune thing. Do they lose hair? No. Their hair follicles fossilize. Do they become hard? They can become so hard they're like rose thorns and you have to pluck them out. Oh, wow. They're in, they pack in all in her hocks. So when she uses her hocks to get up, it's like thorns poking in her. Oh. It's did really your, weird. Did your vet have to pluck them out? No, I was plucking them out prior because that made sense to me. Yeah. And yeah, then get it out. She wasn't sure what the proper protocol was. And after yeah. she studied it, she's like, wow, you're doing it exactly right. Good. It was funny because I usually diagnose my dogs before they go in. They're my own dogs, so I can. Yeah. We all but I tell the vet what I want them to do because I'm very adamant that yeah. I want my dog treated properly with what I want. Was so, what I found on WebMD. No, just what I know from a lifetime of being in dogs. And the last time my vet called me, he goes, you're right again. <laughs> and that's how he said it. Again. You're right again. Aww. But I'm allowed to do that with my own dogs. And I like a vet that respects my opinion enough to listen to me. To listen. He may then say, you're wrong. Of course <laughs> I would listen to my vet. But I know what I want, and if I want, and the reason why I came up with that, especially when it comes to dentals, is because my last carry blue, I he, I could smell a funky smell from his mouth, but his mm. teeth looked really good. Mm. I took him to the first vet. No, what? his teeth look fine. He doesn't need a dental. Doesn't that usually tell you it could be something with the liver? It could be a number of things, but it smelled like a bad tooth. Oh. So they're like, his teeth looks fine. He doesn't need a dental. So I waited two weeks. I smelled stronger. Mm -hmm. And so I went to another vet. No, his teeth look fine. He doesn't need a dental. So I waited another two weeks. The smell was getting stronger. So I took him to Dr. Janoska next door before he passed away. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, his teeth look fine. I said, I don't care what his teeth look like. Schedule a dental. <laughs> yeah. I was tired of hearing it. My dog was suffering with an abscess tooth. Oh. And I could smell it. Was it abscess up in the in the gum where, where you couldn't see it? Yes, because his teeth looked perfect because I brushed his teeth. Yeah. You couldn't see a tartar buildup. Right. And you couldn't see it in the gum. You couldn't see the swelling. You could just smell it. Yes. And, and there's they, nothing that smells that's very distinct of yeah. infection. Yeah. And when his, when they put him under anesthesia, they realized it was up in his canine going into his nasal area. That's dangerous. And they had to break the canine out because the canine was still basically kind of healthy. Oh. And it was bad. That's sad. And yeah. It made me feel bad because my dog suffered with a abscess tooth and I went to three separate vets. Well, it seemed to be a hard one to diagnose because it of the was. way it was a different situation than normal. It was, but... They should have taken, they shouldn't have just kept saying, oh, no dental needed. You know, maybe look into it a little further. Absolutely. If you're smelling foul infection, there's an infection somewhere. Correct. Definitely. And the first two didn't even put them on antibiotics. Well, that surprises me right there. I know. But they could smell that there's infection. Well, I could. They never yeah. mentioned it. 
So anyway, that's why now I'm like, I'm doing a dental whether you like it. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, Hannah had a dental in May, and then she had another dental in November. And I took her, took her back in, and I'm like, she's got a bad tooth. That's when he said, you're right again. He was as surprised as I was. It's only been a couple months mm -hmm. for it to be that bad. But nevertheless. I can, a, a lot of things can happen in a couple of months mm -hmm. as far as it, something brewing. <laughs> Especially an old dog. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Good boy, Charlie's. Oh, I gotta get your face. I guess I'll start working on the face. I'm gonna use the little mat breaker brush. Come here, Charlie. Because it's Just smaller. Here. Real quick. Good boy. So, for the pet parents, if you're going to continue home grooming him, I recommend scissoring him every four weeks on a schedule, stick it in your phone, make a plan every four it. weeks. Scissor the dog. And when you scissor him, comb him from one end of his body to another. And if you wash him, comb him the same day. I don't care if it's before or after the bath. Comb every inch of the dog that day. After you've brushed him thoroughly. After you've brushed him, to of get course. This, that's to get a the, good point. To get the dead hair out. Yeah, you got to brush him mm -hmm. thoroughly. And loosen it up. And then check him with the comb. And when we get to the point of a thorough comb through, I'll show you. If you're combing the dog and you run into a place where the comb snags, you back the comb back out of the snag. You don't continue on with the combing. It's like you're combing down, you hit a snag, you back it up, brush, 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 try to comb. If it doesn't go through, back it up, brush, 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 until the comb goes through. Mm -hmm. But you comb one end of the dog to the other Every time the dog gets wet. Sorry, Charlie. Now, if he doesn't get wet, you can let him go probably as much as two weeks with the length that Cody's going to have in between a thorough brushing, preferably weekly. But you can go two weeks as long as he doesn't get wet with his coat tight. I wouldn't let a good brushing go any further than that. And combing. Now you might say, well, we really like the curl in his hair, and if we brush and comb him and we don't set back in his curl, he's going to be too fluffy. I understand that. So plan a bath the same day. Brush him and comb him from one end of his body to the other, then wash him, then run a wide tooth comb over from one end of the body to the other while he's good and wet, then scrunch in his curl, and then you're good to go. That way you can have your cake and eat it too. Do they answer their Charlie? Yeah. Hmm. That's why he's so fluffy. They like his hair. Yeah. Well, I get that. I know. So we're almost an hour into the brush out and we're not done. He's not bathed. He's only been brushed and dematted. Not even dematted. We still can't get a comb through. Right. They're not dematted till the comb goes through. It's like it ain't over till the fat lady sings. It ain't over till the comb goes through. Right. I'm not sure. I'm thinking I'm going to scissor him before the bath. 
to get his correct look. Well, we might have to scissor brush a bit and then scissor again. Yeah, we're going to use thinning shears as we get to a certain point to come up in under those. I'm not using my thinning shears on that dirty coat. <laughs> I've got other thinning shears. Okay. <laughs> Just like I have other scissors. Other. I've got my clean coat and my well, dirty coat stuff. Baby. Did I lose my coffee? Yeah, it went all over the place. <laughs> oh, did you get a new one? Did, oh, you, well. did you make another one? No. I think you did. Was there any left in that? Or? I might have finished it. I don't know. It's been it's a busy so afternoon. Ago. I don't know. It's been a busy afternoon. I'm going to go get the other car. Stay, Charlie. Stay here. Don't Rachel. slip on that here. It's slippery. Okay. Charlie. Some big old mats in here, big guy. They're just being, they're just being mean. How you doing, bud? You good boy. Say, well, so then mm. I, I've been better. <laughs> you good boy. I would be running around playing ball, having fun, getting my picture taken, getting my picture taken. But I'm standing here in this room and you have this shrine to me, which is kind of, <laughs> kind of creepy. Are you stalking me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am stalking you, Carla. <laughs> I stalk your Instagram all the time. I love your Instagram, Charlie. I'm a fan. Okay, lady, that's considered... <laughs> Stalking and I'm a creepy. stalker fan. <laughs> I keep your picture enshrined in my closet. <laughs> okay, now we're really getting creepy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlie. I gotta do his chin. Isn't he the best dog? Yes. He's super awesome. He's a good, good boy. He is. You're the bestest baby, I shall <laughs> See, Julian, you just yanking me from one side to the other. Yank, yank, yank. I'm sorry, Charlie. Actually, the only parts I really need combed out are the back and the head and the tail and the ears because the rest are going to fluff. See these little things, this, this is the problem. These little things are stuck up in there. The back, the head, and the tail, you said? And the ears. And then the legs, so. Uh, I can brush all that out after the bath pretty good, but I'm gonna hand scissor in everything where the heavy curl's gonna be. Okay. Before the bath. Mm -hmm. So do the loners. You can do all this before your dog goes to the groomer if you want to keep hair. But allow you yourself can... a whole afternoon. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's work. Yeah. Don't think it's a 20 minute job. It's not. Brush and comb your dog before the groomer. Actually keep your dog brushed and combed. Okay. All the time. And then you won't have to do this. Yeah. It becomes... Something that isn't fun for your dog at that point. And you want your grooming time with your dog to be special for you and for them. Relaxing. Yeah. And it can be special for both of you. You know, that it's it's a good time. It's They're pleasing you, and it isn't a six-hour job. That's not fun for them. So try to keep it... Keep comfortable. Comfortable, keeping yourself on schedule for the weekly brush-outs, thorough weekly brush-outs like what we're doing, which will... Not take this long if it's done thoroughly every week. And a dog like Charlie with this much coat, honestly, if you want to keep him from matting and becoming nasty, a proper bath, meaning done right, a proper bath every two weeks for this coat mm -hmm. and, a, and a thorough weekly brush out. And with combing. With combing, following up with combing, will keep him in a position. Because a brush out isn't shh, shh, shh. No. A brush out is sinking your comb to the skin and out 
over every inch of your dog after you're done brushing, that's a brush out. A brush out isn't just brushing. A brush out is using your comb. You can't have one without the other. That's what I always say. These two are friends. They're married. They're married. And They're, they love each other. They love each other very much. Goofy. <laughs> We're delirious. I think so. <laughs> I They're mean, saying you're hilarious, not delirious. Delirious. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. But yes, I don't blame pet owners for wanting to have such a beautiful coat no. and a beautiful haircut. But you have to you have to be sensible about it and say, so how, how do I, how do I maintain this and how do I keep it so that the grooming sessions are shorter and sweeter? That's happier for you and for your pet. So you make that weekly brush out, weekly thorough brush out and comb out. <clears throat> Bathing, proper bath done right, rinsing all product out of your dog thoroughly or else you're gonna cause mats if you don't. If they leave yeah, that product that's what in there. Ties this. Yeah, you leave that product in there. So every two weeks you're bathing and then following that up with a thorough brush out and comb out as well. And then I would, for a dog like Charlie and the type of hair he grows, I would every six weeks put it in my calendar that that is groom day I for Charlie. Four. Thorough, if you did four, he would always be in good shape. And he would never be a three-hour job. Never. And have it in your calendar so that 